So, uh, two or two and a half years ago, I did an episode of this podcast about Louis C.K. with just a lot of different interview clips and stuff that uh, a lot of them were from the Opie and Anthony show. And as I was listening through, there'd be this guy that kept showing up in the background of a lot of these shows, this, this super hilarious loud dude. And after a while, I was like, who is this guy? Like, Every time this guy said something, it always cracked me up, and it was always really smart. I was like, wait, who is this guy? So I looked it up, and I found out his name was Patrice O'Neill. And I was like, all right, yeah, I've heard that name before, especially uh, in New York a lot, people would talk about him. But I didn't really know who he was, so I looked into him, and I started looking up his different stuff in his stand-up, and he was on Opie and Anthony like over a hundred times, and just really great stuff. And I was like, man, this guy is... He's awesome. He's one of these guys like uh like almost like a um like a preacher, you know? And I just I love that kind of comedian. That's like my favorite. I was amazed I never really knew who he was, and then 2 weeks later he fucking died. It was ridiculous. I was like, "What the fuck is going on? Like I just found out who this guy is and now he's dead?" So that was in 2011, and I just started listening to everything I could find with Patrice O'Neill. This is 2014 now, and uh, it's just become part of my routine. It's just like, let, let's listen to some Patrice O'Neill. And it's just amazing how much stuff I found that's just amazing. Like this guy, I call this episode tremendous because it's, uh, it's a word he uses sometimes and it's so appropriate. This dude was fucking, he was tremendous. He was so fucking good. So this is just a collection of clips of, as I was listening through every appearance I could dig up of Patrice O'Neill, just stuff that stood out to me. It's about two hours worth of stuff. I was going to try to add in some music and stuff, but it just didn't seem to fit. I think it's better just just to have just Patrice. Here he is just talking. And uh, if you know Patrice O'Neill, I hope you enjoy this little walk down memory lane. If you don't know him, I think, man, I think you're going to like him. This guy, he, he was amazing. So here is my episode about Patrice O'Neill. I sat twice up on the front row at MSG. It's so intoxicating when you're <laughs> in the front row. You're looking around at who else you is there, right? You have to move your feet because you might trip the player. <laughs> <laughs> when they threaten to take that away, it's scary. It's it's deflating. It's it's it, it makes it makes me furious, man. It makes me furious because you feel lonely and help. You feel helpless. Because you know you have to deal with this shit to make it in this business. And I got in this business because I was a funny kid. Mm -hmm. And then I found out what comedy was. And it ain't funny. <laughs> and I'm like, it, it tricked me. It tricked me. I thought it was just fun and games and I get paid. I try. I swear to God I try. But I'm like, I don't want to put myself in a spot to where I'm balanced. Like, I'm telling you, I, I, sit, I sit in my house every day and I, and I, I, I appreciate... My ceiling fan, man. Because one day somebody's going to try to take it. And I got to look God at it and know that someday somebody's going to try to take my ceiling fan. The game we're in is like jail. There's no rogue, lonely, uh, gunslinger guy in Hollywood. There's no, I do it myself and nobody fucks with me. Do it my way. My way. Help. It ain't none of that. You got to yeah. be affiliated. It's like um the Godfather. The guy goes, Godfather. And he goes... Well, you never even fucking say hi to me. Yeah. But you know what? Here's my deal. I'll do what you want. And when I need you, I'm gonna just going to come yeah. get what I need. And he goes, you hear this? Knock on the door. And it's like, you got to pay me back. And the fear that guy that when you owe is that they're going to take everything from you. Mm -hmm. So if if they didn't make you, they can't really break you. But I, I made a decision. That's why people go, well, why Patrice isn't? I don't want to owe that much. Mm -hmm. I don't. Because... <laughs> There's people that count on me to have a, 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 a like a revolutionary attitude sometimes. Just where I argue. Yeah. So I let a lot of people down if I put myself in a position to have to f flop around on my belly. Have to be a spokesperson See, like that, or right? This Honestly? business is the beast. 
Yeah. And it eats everybody and shits them out. But here's what's funny about the beast. It's a never-ending line of people who want to get in the mouth and get <laughs> chewed up and shit out. Why is that? It's because you, when you get in the belly, yeah. you get $2 million a week. <laughs> and when you get shit out, you have the option to go get back in line and wait to go get back in the beast and get eaten and this shit out. Fucker is and we line hilarious. up. I used to have a very elitist attitude about comedy. Right. I, I came down off of that kid, Tony Roberts, he's a comic, funny guy, and he was just explaining comedy. He goes, yeah, man, it's like the circus, you know, man? It's like you got the trapeze dudes, you got the... I go, okay, you know, you know, got the line tamers. I was like, okay, you know, because I used to... If, if you wasn't into what I was into yeah. as a comic, meaning trying to, trying to be a good comic for, for the art yep. and raise the art, I, I hate, you know, basically hate your guts. But he got me off of that a little bit. Which it was a very simple idea. It was like, yeah, that's true. Not everybody is in it. I want everybody in it to be uh, have an artistic kind of you know platform, a, f a philosophical base, anything. Not just you know. That's why I'm like reclusive when it comes to comedians. Like the guys that's performing here, they probably think I'm a douche. The, the two guys is opening, but I just can't. I just well, I just have no room for them. It's hard not to I, talk. I, I, to I think him. it's hard not to have that attitude sometimes. To just if anything's funny to anybody, then why not just do that? You know, I mean, why work for it? Well, going to laugh at it. That's what I'm saying. Growing up, see, I got into this business because I was a funny person, and this was the the, the natural, you know, progression to a funny person can actually make yeah. money. There's yeah. a thing, with, you know, if there was no such thing as comedy, I'd just be a funny guy working at this at the supermarket or whatever. Yeah. But comedy is supposed to be for funny people. Sometimes you you look at people who do comedy and you go where where's the root to why you do this? And I realized this comedy has nothing to do with being funny. I mean I was hilarious till I started doing comedy, <laughs> and then it's like it's it's just not even um look when I do a show the reason I, I don't mind silence like if I was doing if 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 I was, if I haven't been doing it as long as I have and, and had the 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 mindset I have in terms of I think that some uh, you have to have someone emotionally invested in the shit. So you have to have someone hate you. Angry or, yeah. And have to have someone love you. It's, that's what it is. It's love and hate. That's what funny is. It's like, fuck you. It was comedy's at somebody's expense, man. I mean, funny's at somebody's expense. You never really have a good laugh unless it's at something. Right. You know, unless I've never like laughed at a fucking joke. Someone tell me a joke. <laughs> like, I've never laughed at a fucking joke. Right. Like, where somebody goes, eh, once there was a little kid, right? And I go, that sucks, man. Nobody got hurt. The fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> it's not your act. People love your act. People love who your you act. Are. It's who you are. They hate you. Garbage. <laughs> just in your, they just hate you as a person. <laughs> this Every is way, your intervention. I've been waiting for this day. There, there is no awful human beings. I'm a good person. Yeah. Not, I'm just. It just. You human, just got a thing human, about you. It, it, that's what it is. <laughs> I can name ten guys. You're funny. You know what? And Chris, you know what? This <laughs> is how you know. This is how you know. Way more successful than you. This is Chris. <laughs> Chris is talking to me like a middle-aged white man. That's how middle-aged <laughs> white people talk to me. You know I'm finished because Chris is like, look, my son. Yeah. You need to work on this. <laughs> if you think it's just jokes, you got <laughs> <laughs> jokes are only half the, the battle. This is every conversation you have about Patrice goes to this. He's a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is years ago, you know, Noah. This is in the in the in the mid nineties. This was I, I used to do this. I met him. I I hated Patrice. <laughs> his yeah. pomposity. See, I'm gonna follow it. Let me just practice saying thank you to people. Just, just say something to me, Owen. Uh, I don't have anything I can say to you. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks anyway. Hey, thanks for, anyway for. I'm trying to learn instead of going. Ugh. <laughs> this is Patrice. And you compliment him because he is yeah. a sweet guy, but he doesn't. He doesn't want anyone to know he that. He's, know he's got that love. tough outer shell that you, you got to like, break through. If you said Patrice, that hosting job you did was so good that one time. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's Patrice. Patrice doesn't I realize. Know. He doesn't realize he's a big black man. <laughs> so he thinks he's going. Hey, how you doing? But. What we hear is, Ooga Booga! Thank you so much for the opportunity. Ooga Booga 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 Booga! People who don't like Patrice hate him.
Because he gets the people because he, if he teases you, he's loud. You're not going to be louder than he is. And, no. uh, I never realized he couldn't them. take a compliment properly because no, I, I, had, I had complimented you on uh, y your appearances on The Office. Even though they were very um, uh, brief, but you, you were very good. Can I tell you really quickly people why? Always, when they write for Patrice, they make sure they can write them out. Too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how this is going to work. And he's out for this character. Put a pre existing medical condition in the character description. <laughs> it starts off with that. It yeah. in the show. He's boisterous with a heart condition. Just in case. <laughs> that fun loving, weak hearted man. It, it starts off with diabetes and a doctor's appointment. First episode. First episode. <laughs> you could go into a coma right. in, in season two. <laughs> they don't want to lose a if minute of production if time. If you Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, uh, Arrested Development, too. I love that show. I think I got thrown out of there for the same reason. Why? I don't think I said thank you. Yeah, right. see, that's your that's, problem. Uh, what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you what are, get just, hey, we, just, just see? Just really? be nice. I think we only... You have, uh, you have to be somewhere? We only have you for know, another you know, 10 minutes or so? Whatever you need. I'm, I'm here. Can we take a quick break and then for, continue? For you? Sure. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he doesn't like doing radio, so no. that's a compliment. I, I who think. does? Do that Jesus one more time. Christ. That's too early. I, do that one more time. Just for, for, for you? See, I, I know. See, I, there was, that was nothing that, that, in me to even know to say that. That, that was just Same. acting, though. But it was... That wasn't sincere. He, that was just acting. No, but I know. <laughs> that's what he's saying. Black people... Um, I, I, I don't like to think in terms of like being a victim and being black, dude. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing I try to get white people to understand, Mark, is that, um, white is a, is a, is a fluent concept. It's an idea. White to us, and I, I've said this a few times, but here's what white is to us. The decency that nature has given the Jews in their plight, the decency is to have a villain. In both plights, Moses, there was Pharaoh. That nigga looked like Yul Brynner. Mm -hmm. Yul Brynner was the evil force yeah. holding you down. Yeah. And God freed you. <laughs> God <laughs> said, no, Jews, you must go. Yeah. Okay? Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Then it's the Holocaust. Mm. Hitler, Hitler. He was a bad one. Hitler and his crew were the, it, it was e, after the war. It was against the law. You can't even have the mustache no more. Yeah. You can't even rock that. Yeah. You rock that. That's not a law, but it's an understanding. It's, it's un you just yeah. don't rock it. Sure. That nigga yeah. is the devil. Yeah. That's okay. Right. That mustache is the devil. Right. Hitler, then the devil. Right. So that what that enables you to do is move on. Mm -hmm. Move. It mo mm -hmm. enables you to move on. Okay. Meaning, I I don't have to hate every German. I don't have to be bogged down. After the Holocaust... Being a fucking Nazi was criminal to this day. If they find out you used to be a Nazi, you get fucked over. You can't even apologize. Yeah. Oh, right. no, I only put a couple in ovens. You. No, no, no. You're done. That's right. Okay? Even if you're 100 years old, yep. you're going to jail. They, you're, you're fucked. Yeah. That, 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 which is great for the spirit of being Jewish. It's great. It's just like <laughs> we went through this. Yeah, we went through this. But we know our, we know what exactly what happened. Yeah. We know exactly how many people it happened to, and we know exactly who the fuck did it. Yeah. So it enables you to have a chapter in a book. Yeah. Uh, when I start off with white people, I say, look, white is is the only thing we got from slavery. We don't have a a we have a a, a finish date. Questionable start date, questionable amount of people that died, uh, questionable effect on our minds. Um, when we were freed, it was like, bye, nigger. Nice talking to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, you live, you've been living this way 400 years. Now we expect you to live uh, wonderfully now. And uh, what we did to you is not criminal. And, and the only thing left is your skin. So you have the skin color of... The enemy. So every white person is Hitler's mustache, really. To my to my gut, yeah. every white, all white skin is that. On some level. On some level. I'm disappointed in show business. It's just mm. anything that you know. You get into the business and you go, well, I'm a I'm a funny guy. I like funny. Yeah. Boy, show business is here for a guy, 
a piece of shit like me who can make a buck making people laugh because I'm a funny dude. I get into it, and in the 18th year, I just realize um, one thing you don't need in this business is integrity. You, you're you a fucking idiot <laughs> if you have a, a some type of a core value system it's yeah. useless yeah. you know something it's it just makes you stupid it, to uh, fucking yeah. do that there's no karma there's no justice i just came to the realization that i wasted 18 years i just wasted oh. 18 years of having some type of like issues with with like how i conduct myself you know what i mean really? i try to conduct myself with respect, and it's dumb. You don't see it as a, a growing process? Yeah, what's wrong with you? It's a, a fucking maturing, dumb. Yeah, it's not a wa I don't think you wasted your time, that's for sure. I just feel like I did. I feel oh, like, I feel like um, you know, a lot of people in this business are acute. There's a lot of prosperous people mm -hmm. who no one, no one respects, no one likes as a human being. No one, everybody thinks is a douche. But they just are prosperous. Yeah, yeah. And their Doing families well. are prosperous. But maybe and they're, they're just miserable. pieces of dog shit. Maybe they're miserable. Couldn't be more miserable than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I understand that. I'm just saying it it, it 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 the grass is always greener kind of shit. I hate the fact that I have to look at somebody um uh, you know, comic buddy right now is is this dude, he's diabetic too. Uh, and he's about the same age. He's going blind, and uh, I hear he got cancer and all kind of shit. Jesus. So I have to look at him at the age he is close to mine and his situation and go, well, I I could be there, but for the grace of God, I, I have to look I. at his horror to feel better about my. I just, I just, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm having a midlife crisis. I'm really not positively sure of that. I can't say yeah. I'm not because I don't know the rules of a midlife crisis. But again. I'm 40 to white guys. That's fucking teenage years. Y'all start having families at 56. Right. For a black guy, though, 40. For a black guy, that might be a midlife getting there, crisis. Getting up there, mm -hmm. 40. You know, if I finger, feel a tingling in my pinky, uh, I'm like, oh, uh, Lord. Oh, Lord. And I go, am I going to just die in here? Like, I just don't want to die it could last, it, it could last a couple before years. I really Make put a, a foot or in something? somebody's ass <laughs> that means something. Yeah, you want to kind of. Make a mark? What do you want? A legacy or something? I don't. You I don't want think like of those a, things? I don't even think of wills. I didn't think of none of that shit. Who cares yeah. the shit about the will things? But anyway, to to sum it all up and yeah, say, hey, yeah. guys, appreciate I, I appreciate coming on here because I think getting getting to just to scream all that stuff out. Dude, there's yeah. people out there that just think that this conversation is sickening because we're we're in oh yeah, 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 yeah we got yeah. good spots but 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 my thing is like if i ever argue with a plumber about whatever i go i didn't i didn't listen <laughs> i compare my misery to my fucking self i made the decisions that i made right you decided to fucking be a plumber <laughs> that's what plumbers do i don't compare my choices to your because I'm not a square. This is why I, I respect what we do more than doctors or anything else. Is because you can be a doctor if you decide to be. <laughs> True, yeah. Like, there's just no leap of faith as a doctor. You just go, I'm going to school. That's why everybody's mother goes, yay, you're yeah. going to be a doctor. That's why my mother was like, hmm. <laughs> He's Ma, at 22, her boy, she saw a boy become a man who still lived at the house. And my decision, my drum roll was comedian. And she went, hmm. You know what it is? There's no finish line. Like, like it's I'm still, you're still falling. A, a lot of parents want the guarantee. Like you said, a doctor. Your kids to have line. a guarantee. There's a line when all of a sudden they, they hand you paper after years of school and money and shit, and you step over that line and I'm a doctor. We're in this gray area of, like, tomorrow. what the fuck is it? What's and we made the choice. Right. See, that's the thing is people are, they're complaining about, motherfucker, this, is, this shit ain't, this is what, I re sometimes I, my mother gets, she goes, I go, I think I might get this deal and shit. And she goes, here's time for you to buckle down. And I go, are you giving me fucking advice <laughs> on my shit that I've done alone? You don't have a passport, Ma! <laughs> She's just... You're not worldly! Like, like, when I sit here and listen to her, her be a mother,
mother. A mother. Which is advice. why women have kids just to have somebody that they that's forced to listen to them. Yeah. But we have arguments now because I don't have to listen to my mother. I go, Ma, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Legitimately, like yeah. not not Ma, what's going? But Ma. I, yes, have a seat. You, 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 I could just feel you drifting away. Just sit down. Your feet are swelling up. You don't know what the fuck you, you're talking about. Yeah. Because this business is so lonely because no one believes in you. When you go, <laughs> I'm going to be a comic, everyone goes, you're, it's like, t you ever try to tell somebody an actual dream? Man, I fell asleep last night, man. It was a unicorn with a gun <laughs> and he had on boots. That's and, what you should say when you say you, you would go to like, show business. Yeah. Alone. To you, it was like fucking, yeah. The, I used you, to fucking go outside, right? When you first start out, you can only get a gig every two months. Every two months. <laughs> and I used to go outside and just go someplace pretending I was going to do comedy. So she didn't think that this was oh, a fiasco. Shit. I'm telling you. So now it's like you at this point. It's a lonely game. That's what people. Yeah. That's what my woman doesn't understand. She thinks I hate her. I just you don't understand, sweetie. My loneliness is so important to me. You're and don't, don't try to help me not be lonely. Yeah. Like I don't like anybody right now. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to see anybody. Yeah. I just want to be introverted. Grinch. That's if somebody saw my holidays from Thanksgiving <laughs> oh, to now, yeah. it would be a sad scene <laughs> in a movie that somebody would think they wrote. Hey, just man. if you did a time lapse of me just sitting around jerking off <laughs> three it's times a day. Yeah. Three times a day. That's your holiday. I have mastered left hand Mouse. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jerking off to the right, and I'm sitting there <laughs> looking for the exact right porn. And you we never get it. Yesterday. We were talking about it yesterday. yesterday. How it's like. You never find the exact. How you go, how you go, this is the one. I'm going to finish to this one. And then you're just about ready and go, now nah, there's a better one. There's a better one. <laughs> and hours go by. Hours. And then, you end, up, and then you end up coming as you rewind. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're coming, you go like, why did I wait so long? Did you ever come? Did you ever, come, coming to did you ever come and not feel anything? Thing. You waited too long. The feeling slowly leaked out over a half hour. I'm just mad that you spent so much time doing find, that, finding that perfect moment. You never Fuck find it. the perfect moment. It's yeah. just a. It's just. But Patrice, I you're wouldn't brief. trade it in. No, I, I think death is starting to bother me. That's yeah. a midlife crisis. Yeah, I just it's you feel it every fucking yeah. pain I mean, in your body. Like now. no, you know what? In my lifetime, I've never only can imagine Elvis as being the the comparative. No one has cared about a death of anybody more than Michael Jackson in my life. Uh, in my lifetime. That I'm was sure. a biggie. JFK, yeah. Elvis, Michael Jackson, huge. Yeah, yeah. Nobody John Lennon. gives Lennon. a fuck. You Lennon throw was Lennon a biggie. Yeah. Lennon, but nobody cares. Nobody <laughs> fucking gives a shit. No, dude. So you're just here but and you're gone. Once you accept that. You're done. Once you accept that, just go then with you're it. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're done with it. Then it's just like, all right. And I'm more important else. than most people. Yeah, this people people yeah. know my name, yeah. but there's a yeah. guy right now that's just nobody. At least, so be on, gonna be, at least you'll be on the internet for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, the internet's kind of giving everybody a little immortality for as long as that lasts. And I want fucking to be burned. You do? I, I do not. Alive? I, no. No. <laughs> no. 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 Uh, fucking cremated. Because yeah. I don't want to be anybody's oil. Uh, what? For in in what? the year 40 billion. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you don't want to pump it. I don't want to just be oil. It's like, this Space is what my life came down to. That's fucking brontosaurus. <laughs> Some brontosaurus is my fucking oil. Yeah. No. <laughs> Burn me, <laughs> motherfucker. How's this? I'm not in somebody's <laughs> fucking get, Patrice, flying huh? car, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. How's this? After, <laughs> after you die, there will be thousands and thousands of beautiful days. Just beautiful days for other people to enjoy. Shut up. Oh, it's horrible. Look, look there's it? a beautiful sun coming up here in New York City today, and there are millions and millions of people that are not going to see it today. Oh, fuck. Uh, that's creepy. Man. Why don't we take a well, break? Well, that was my holiday. Now, I appreciate it. I if we're going to continue out. with this, we better get some pot. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, we'll, we'll talk about something. We're going to have fun after the break. <laughs> And this yeah. is talking about comedy. Yeah. I notice when I'm, I notice a long time when I'm bombing. Yeah. When I'm bombing, 
The worst thing to ever do is try to not bomb. The best thing to do is take everybody to die. Everyone dies. <laughs> I don't. I'm not dying. Yeah. You're gonna die. Yeah, with yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna try to win you back because I notice about people. Yeah. People are hot when power corrupts. Yeah. When an audience sees that you're struggling and then you're trying not to struggle and you need them not to struggle, they get worse. They don't get better to try to help you dig yourself. They want to put the dirt on your grave yeah, and watch yeah. you fail. Yeah. So I go, you know, you, well, guess what? You're going to watch yourself. You, everyone's going to fucking be miserable. I don't want the fucking N word in my life. If you feel nigger, you could call it flowers and pudding, but it's fucking feeling like nigger. So the N word, I fucking, I got to listen to the N word, describe a word that I've never even heard. Before the N word was this, I never heard. I never heard anything where I go, okay, put nigger there in place of that word. But the N word was invented so that you can say nigger somehow. So you found a way to fucking say nigger. And I never heard nigger like I hear the N word to describe nigger. <laughs> it's it's some tricky horse shit it's shit i learned in boston it's shit it's shit that i want all black people to learn it's it's passive aggression it's 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 a uh, it's uh what's it, what do you call it it's it's covert racism and a lot of dudes and, and the people i never um i never got along with are people that let this business qualify who they are i'm i'm at this level patrice so i can now like when i was here I didn't talk to you, but now Comedy Central has put me here. Now I'm here with you. No, you're not. I don't care if God gave you a deal where you get half the world. You ain't me. I think I can get Tyra. Huh? Yeah. I think I can get her. You have to just take her up to an emotional level. Uh, just dismiss her and be arrogant like if she's wait, wait, talking. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh -huh. Walk us through how you get Tyra. You have to this get her. You have to get her be emotional because she's about as dumb as a as an unlit candle. Oh, so it's like stupid. if you just if you dismiss Tyra, she's the type of girl that is. If she thinks she has something to say, and 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 she has emotions, and it just goes straight for her, her mind. But she doesn't have a plan to, you know, our plan B. Uh huh. So all you got to do, like when she's talking, you just go shh. If you shush Tyra, she will get livid. And if she keeps screaming, you just go, shh. You just, Tyra. <laughs> just keep going. Yeah, you just go, shh. Tyra, you're not saying anything you never have, and you know it. You're just an idiot. Listen, let me talk. Let me, let me, let me run this for you. And she will scream and get mad, and all you got to do is take that passion of the hatred. It's easy to take passion, hate, women's hate, and turn it right into love. I'm telling you. <laughs> Because <clears throat> an emotion is an emotion for a girl. I'm telling you, I can get tired. As long Tyra. as it's strong. I just, I'm tired, the emotion that, is strong. I believe the truth. I, I, I'm tell telling that you. I'm you're serious about that. I tell my girl all the time don't you ever mm -hmm. let a fucking guy get you mad. Because that means you have passion to spare. That means you got some. You got passion that you could be using God with me damn, huh? to spare. You don't, you don't fucking let some guy say something to you. That means that I'm not giving you enough. You know, enough emotional fucking shit to feed on. And she has no emotion. No one says anything to her that challenges her. She's an idiot. If she called in, I would say, Tyra, you know, let's be honest. You are a fucking idiot. <laughs> and she would scream and she would be emotional. And I would wow. laugh at her because she really wouldn't have any logic behind her emotions. No. I'd be like, you, stupid. I'd be like, Tyra, look, sweetie, if you was a fat, ugly girl, you wouldn't exist. You know, yeah. and you're lucky that for some reason modeling has made tall, goofy, big head girls like you <laughs> to be pretty. I'm not going for it. There's this African wow, model. Wow, you're good. She's the worst looking person I've ever seen in my life. It's a little short hair, crispy little mess. And I'm like, I refuse to let you tell me that this bitch is a model. Tyra in 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 high school got teased. Her head is big. She's tall. She's Too not thin. needed. She's probably she, skinny, skinny. Somebody decided that a girl like that is is cute, and but Tyra was a big, long-headed idiot in high school, and now she's her whole life has been pampered 
Uh, Naomi Campbell's another one. She's a beluga Idiot. whale. Just forehead. dismiss her. Dismiss her existence because it's never been dis- dismissed. It's what? that simple. I like. Wow. I get her. God damn, he's got a great point. I'm telling you, dude. She's thing. a. She's. She has no options in her life. Oprah would be harder to 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 get because op- Oprah had to have options. Yeah, yeah. she had to work through you know? her fatness. Yeah, she had to. She had to have plan B's in her she life. She had to have plan B, yeah. C, and D. Yes, and no bullshit. But Tyra. Tyra, all about her looks. <laughs> yep. Just a. She's a. And she is, dude. She's. She is legitimately amazing looking. Like. Yeah. Like you stand next to her, man. She's about six foot tall, and she's gained a little weight, so she just got all the meat in the right place and these sexy uh, dress, these wear. I mean, fat ass. I, I would just oh. Really going out on a limb there. Oh, I'm You'd picturing what I would, I would. But I'm not saying <laughs> now. Nah, just fuck her. You know, I would ravish. Oh yeah, that's right. I'd lick her underarms. <laughs> I do something creepy. It's the only creepy place you ain't supposed to lick. Come here, let me lick the corner of your nose between your cheek and your... Mmm, <laughs> let me lick... Mmm, <laughs> yeah, smell of underarm. Smell of... <laughs> behind, behind the ear where the oh, ear meets the skull. Oh, the skull. Let me, come on, let me lick that meat where your ear... <laughs> Just all kind of creepy places. <laughs> Give me those elbows. <laughs> Give me, those rough, give me those rough elbows. Oh, no, no, don't um, lotion them. Don't lotion them. Don't lotion them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it. <laughs> I like it all cracky. Yeah, man. I, oh, shoot. Hey. Uh, eighth place, worst sequels of all time. Friday the 13th, part eight. <laughs> How do they distinguish why eight is any worse well, than... Well, you know why? Jason takes Manhattan. Uh, yes, that was the one oh, in New York. Okay. That was the one where it got... It got campy. Got goofy. Because from one to four was yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Part part four was great when the kid killed him, um, and and his head slid. It was the end of Jason. Which one five, was the machete going through the guy in the wheelchair's head? Was that, that was two? two? That was a good one. That was two. One one was uh, the mother. Yeah. Two was um. Kill them. The, Kill them, the, mommy. The, the girl who lived it from <laughs> one, she got stabbed in the head with a um. A screwdriver. Yeah. Then three was 3D, but it was great because the girl got shot in the eye, and that's when the hockey mask came. Then four, the little Corey Feldman, little chopped Corey him in Feldman. his head, killed Jason. Corey Feldman killed Jason. Yeah. Final chapter. But then five came back, and <laughs> how do you know this? This is fantastic. Wait, so five, five was is it accurate? Yeah. Does anyone yeah. even know? It's gotta it's, be. It's, 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 Shut it's, up. I'm not even questioning this. Five, five was five. It was they. Now they said. It, Jason's gone. Yeah. They tinkered around with other motherfuckers doing doing shit. The doing girl. Jason type it wasn't shit. the girl. Girl was seven. Five was <laughs> an amb- a ambulance driver. Right. And Dudley from um, remember Dudley from um, f- uh, Different Strokes. Oh. Arnold, uh-huh. Arnold. Please tell me someone molest Jason molested Dudley. He tried to. Bicycle shop or whatever it was. <laughs> Get in the pool. Jason molested Dudley. Six was Jason lives. Uh-huh. He came back. He killed Horshack. Was his first victim. Ron Polillo. Seven was a new beginning where he had a battle with a clairvoyant, carry like woman. Yes, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Um, Don't point out. Seven. seven was, I'm amazed because he's close enough for my. Uh, he's hitting seven, it by the yeah. Seven was the one he fought the the bitch with the magic powers. And uh-huh. she was like flying uh, uh, electrical wires at him and. He was like, oh, shit, this bitch is bad. He, she was making the floor go out and, yeah. and strangling him. Eight was New York where he punched the guy's head off <laughs> on the, um, when the guy was a, a, an Olympic boxer. They was on the boat, and he was an Olympic boxer, and the guy was punching him in the mask, and he got so tired. He goes, all right, motherfucker, take your best shot. And Jason punched his head off. <laughs> punched his head Number off. nine yeah. was a magical one where Jason, his, his spirit went into like a, a bug. And would go into people. Oh, uh, and kind of Jasonize them. And, and Jasonize them. It was no Jason in that one. It was just. What about Hockey Mask? Where did that come into play there? Um, that. Does everybody that got think, Jasonized go out? First thing they do is go to the sporting. I don't think it was the Hockey Mask. Gotta go to Moe's then, and they get a sporting. Then uh, ten. Hockey Mask? No. Was Jason in Outer Space? Jason X. Where <laughs> he killed the motherfucker. They froze him. Right. I saw that one. And they found him, and the bitch goes, the bitch that was with him when they froze Years him. Years later. Because she was, he was getting ready to chop her up, and she was like, ah, and they was all frozen. They unthawed her. In the future. And she said, hey, man, don't unthaw him, because his evil stretches through time. So they... What do they do? They unthawed him. He killed everybody. <laughs> and what happened is, in the future, when you had an injury, they had these little bugs that put you back together. Yeah. And they fucked Jason up, and he fell down, 
and the bugs merged him with the ship and him. So he became robotic. Robotic. Jason. And Uber. finally was Jason versus Freddy, what we all been waiting for. Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually was a good premise was uh, Freddy was very angry about not getting credit for killing people. What he did, he was sin. He sent Jason in the real world to kill motherfuckers, right? Right. So they could be scared of of uh, Freddy again, because everybody was taking pills so they didn't sleep. Right, and then he can't do anything. He can't to do you. nothing. So what they would do is he pretended he was killing people again, so people would get scared. And then once people go, oh my god, Freddy's back again. They said, fuck the pills, we're gonna sleep. Now Freddy gets you in the in the fucking thing, in the in the thing. But what was happening is Freddy got mad because Jason was killing motherfuckers before he could get to the dream. Yeah. So he was like, You taking my death, nigga. And his whole his whole and, stealing and his thunder. Trees, how do you know all that? I don't I was that is I was, I, I was following along online. He's pretty damn close. I am amazed. You're pretty damn close. I am amazed. And just to be tortured like that, and just want to express himself with woman songs. Yeah, I got to say. Yeah, what? singing the woman songs. And, and it's like, and like you know, guys, it's like how real guys change the lyrics to like men. You know, it's raining stuff. Yeah, <laughs> hallelujah, it's raining things, and it's all wet out here. Tom, oh, it's wet out here. Rough and tough is wet outside. <laughs> it's raining things. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta change the words to this. Uh, wow. Uh, it's raining stuff. Let yourself get absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's raining. Oh! Holy. Woo! <laughs> 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 ow! Ow! Ouch and ooh! Watch out, motherfuckers! Ooh! Yeah! Roll for Jesus! He was a bad motherfucker! Woo! Oh! And he had to do what he had to do! <laughs> Nothing about oh. men! <laughs> Rearrange the sky! So that each and every brother can get out there and do woo! Uh, it's raining stuff. Oh, it's raining things. Uh huh. Watch out, shit is flying around. Oh, uh, the fuck was that? Some heavy shit flying around. Watch your shit. Watch your shit. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> it's raining stuff. Oh. <laughs> uh, thank you, Nathaniel. Oh. <laughs> Nobody. God damn. Oh, yeah. so, we uh, changed the lyrics, but we, you know. I right, think we, we got, got a hit on our hands. <laughs> it's raining stuff. When I was a kid, a I got robbed twice. Yeah. Uh, one was implied gunpoint, and one was actual gunpoint. Oh, implied was what? <coughs> he implied. did the old school the, in the This nigga did the Texas nah, finger shit. in the pocket. <laughs> nah, I'm not Jay. And took, and took his hand out, and took the money, and put the gun. <laughs> Say hand. With what the finger gun, gun nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't have to do much else. I wasn't fucking with him. I don't know any karate moves. I don't even know, even if I got a motherfucker, was quick enough to hold him. I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would do a movie thing and just keep hitting his hand on yeah. something really hard, and maybe he'll drop it. And I'm like, get the How fuck out of here. How scary is it, though, to, to, be, to just watch that barrel of the gun as you're trying to hold it, <coughs> just slowly turning toward your face? No, it, I, I, like, I, and you're trying your best to not... Ugh, the, only thing, the only thing you get mad enough to do is... Is die. Meaning, I'm. You know what? I'm so mad right now. I'm willing to take this gunshot so you take don't have chance. satisfaction. I hate you so much for this. Yeah. The other one I got robbed with a gun and a mm. little little small caliber. I don't know. You know, to me, yeah, probably, people aren't even scared of 22s who know guns. They think 22s are funny. Fuck you up. But they'll kill you. Whatever. Yeah. And uh, but he knew he could rob me at this point. It, this is why I'm so angry. I'm so quick and angry because yeah. the guy had been testing me all the way that night. We was playing basketball. He's just some dude was around, 
just bumping into everybody. Holy he was just fine. You were playing the guy on the basketball court? He was court? playing basketball, yeah. Oh, what a prick. He was Fuck, just lurk. A... He was lurking. Yeah, yeah. Where, like, if I look, it's called the punk test. So, oh. like, it's like five phases. I bump into you. You go, hey, why? Yeah, yeah. This, why? There was enough room for me to and you to walk <laughs> without you bumping into. Me. <laughs> then it was like, a, then it's like a step on your foot. Then it's like a, oops, a hard pinch. You're like, it, he's man, doing what? recon on your he's ass. He's doing recon, yeah, yeah. and by the time he decides he's gonna make up whatever story he is, they're gonna rob you. Like they, he even made up a story. He go, yo, you, I think you was, yo, you did something to my cousin. Oh, go, oh, like, oh. <laughs> but I tried, why, why do you need an excuse? Yeah, at this yeah. point, if you have a gun, <laughs> and I'm, I was so ashamed because to really make it hurt. What Wait the a minute, fuck? he goes like this. He goes, this he shit. goes, hey yo, I, and I said, uh oh. Uh -huh. So I, I tried to be hardcore uh -huh. right away. I tried to be hardcore, but he had already given me the punk test. I failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> Maz no. So he goes, yo, and then I buy I go, yo, what the, what's up, yo? Like But he already knew. And he's like, yo, yeah. man, what the fuck you mean, what's up? I said, whoops. Uh, oh. I, I stuck my heart in my pocket just so he don't take that away. I need the, my heartbeat. That motherfucker, <laughs> he, he fucking, he didn't need a gun at that point, but he knew it. He already knew. Yeah. Right. Fucking, oh. he, he stole, a, I had a, one of those break dancing. I was the first oh, motherfucker no. to have a break dancing Puma suit. It was an old oh, school. Get the, if you look he at, take your Puma suit, <laughs> he did took he? my... 4X tall Puma suit. <laughs> what were you wearing? I, luckily, <laughs> holy I shit. had on. This is <laughs> <laughs> this is so <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I had on a pair of not sexy sweatpants because it was a little cold. Uh -huh. So I had some non sexy sweatpants Underneath. under the Puma suit and a sweater under the Puma suit jacket. And he took he took my puma suit, what your pants and everything. He took my pants. <laughs> now what did he say? <laughs> what did he say? He said, "Yo, nigga, yo, you the motherfucker that fucking you. Oh, you the nigga that was fucking with my cousin, yo. Yo, what the fuck? You you too big to be fucking with my cousin, nigga. Oh, I was like, no. What cousin? I was yeah, trying, trying to be hard. To he said, "Shut the fuck up, nigga." And he he just he didn't even pull it. He showed me. The G of the gun, nigga. Like, right, I don't, right. It was just whatever he showed you. And I was standing there frozen, man. <laughs> but now when I'm he said, yo give, want... me, yo, give me that Puma suit, yo. Give me, them, yo, give me, them, give me like, a suit, yo. Are you thinking, are you fucking shitting me? You want my clothes? No, because back then, people were dying over two things. Eight ball jackets. Eight <laughs> jackets. But back then, it was bombers. Bombers. They were dying. If you had a night, and it didn't have to be leather. If you had a bomber, a nice jacket, you, get, you got killed. Yeah. And uh, big radios that you would carry on your shoulder. Yeah, the big Why would boxes. you walk around that way, then? <laughs> because you fucking... Because that's the way you walked around. You had to. Why would you increase your odds, though? Holy what are you going to do? That's, so what, just, that's I, what... But I'm telling this you... This is my dumb world. I don't get this world. Black people like wolf tick. We don't like to be punks. Like, I know it's... Dude, look, it's, not, it's unexplainable, but we don't like to... So, it's the dozens. It's wolf tick. It's like... It's like, uh, fuck that. I'm, I'm, I'm carrying doing what my I'm shit. Gonna do. I'm, I'm, so, yeah, I'm carrying my shit. Did you I have carry. to take your pants off in front of I everyone? I took my p in front of him and another motherfucker. Oh, were they laughing? Another motherfucker with him? Were they laughing? Were they rubbing it in when you were taking them off? <laughs> Nigga, <laughs> when he said go around the corner, I right, get the fuck out of here, I walked around the corner. As soon as I didn't <clears throat> see him, you've never seen a 300 pound person run, run fast. <laughs> As soon as he let me go, because he could have been like, you know what? Let me just yeah, fuck this fuck guy. This motherfucker. I think he saw me. He yeah, might, you know, looks I don't like, like a guy this that motherfucker. Might say so. And I ran, and I think I looked back, and I saw them peek, and they was not gonna chase me because I ran fast. Holy! Then I went over shit. my boy's house because he was close. Yeah, let's get these motherfuckers. No, no. He laughed. He, they all laughed. They laughed. I was sitting there. You didn't you pull know. any boys in the hood. Shit? I, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. I fucking was punching the air. Like, what the shit? Is the thing about this guy, he was notorious. I didn't feel so bad. Oh, God damn. He was notorious, this guy. Oh, yeah. I yeah. seen him three more times robbing three other people. Holy three different, shit. In, day, in daylight around there. He was brazen. He was, he was, a, he was fucking a, a, a public enemy, this guy. I seen him at a wrestling match <clears throat> robbing people. What, you ever I find was, out he, what, what happened to him? 
No, I don't. Hopefully, gunned down somewhere. It's motherfucker. Something not good. I mean, I'm sure he's. Yeah. His luck was gonna run out. That Sometimes man was Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it ain't like karma works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at this point, this day back then, it was they let you live, man. They, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, in that situation now, they'd shoot me. They just they would shoot me just. Because they wanted to pull that trigger, man. There's, there's motherfuckers that die for Wait less. Wait until you take the Puma, sir. Suit off the, can't be stitching <laughs> oh, up a I was, hole I was dressed like a motherfucker. <laughs> I, was, I thought the story was going to end with you and boxers. Oh, if you were standing there oh, in boxers shit. and a wife beater. And no shoes. <laughs> no shoes. <laughs> no, shoe, and no, no shoes and boxers. I would have been oh, happy. Man. So, And that was pre-diabetes, so I would have walked over glass and everything to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> Cut up feet, rocks. Oh, <laughs> God damn. That's but but after that, up. it's the punk test. And it, 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 it fucked me up for the rest of my life. I, was, I might have been 13, 14, but I was a big motherfucker. Damn. I was already in high school playing football. And I always say, you know, don't let a motherfucker get to the next place. <clears throat> it's like, oh, if you, you know, just, you know, and, and like the advice you get in show business, hey, man, just do it this way this time, and then the next time you can get mm -hmm. more. Like, no, nah, once a motherfucker fuck you in your butt. He wants to take four more pumps. You think he's gonna take one pump? Four more? This guy <laughs> bumped into me. I should have said with one pump. <clears throat> I should have said, man, there was a lot of room, man. Whatever the fuck you trying to do, you better do it. Don't don't go put me through this shit. Oh, oh yeah, you, so that's I what like, you're like, you should have said. I would I should have just said, yo, man, whatever the fuck you doing, do yeah. it. Cause I don't have a gun, but <clears throat> don't play me. Yeah, yeah. Was it a big guy? No, it was two of them. It was a little this little I don't want to say his name. I feel like saying his name, but I don't know. I'm gonna say his name. Cause I don't know if he's still a little motherfucker. But they used to rob drug dealers too. They weren't no. How they just like saw my my breakdancing puma suit. Oh, they shit. can't be alive. Right today. when they saw that suit, they were probably like, <clears throat> "I am jacking that motherfucker for his suit." Dude, I, my mom's used to go out to get me some shit sometime, oh. man. I had a a big. I was. I had to be two fifty, two sixty then, and so it was a three X at least. What the fuck was he gonna do with that? Sell it to a Sell big motherfucker. This somebody that's. <laughs> Was breakdancing so in my <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> he should have took the shoes too. I think he was being um. I think he was being, being merciful. Yeah, he was mercy on you. Yeah, uh, he, <laughs> he was being benevolent. Let the little motherfucker. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Fourteen Fuck years old. Fourteen, man. This yeah. motherfucker was a Did hard you? criminal. Yeah. A lot of things happened to me as a kid. A guy was in the house when I came home from school one time, in the fifth grade. Cause my, you know, I was a latchkey kid. Mm -hmm. He swung in through the. We live in the third floor, the top of the building. He Jeez. swung in through the window. Swung in. <laughs> he swung through the window, and uh, he was in the house, man. I was I was uh, ten or something in fifth grade, and he was standing there with a knife and shit. Matter of Jeez. fact, I ain't gonna lie, it was a butter knife. But I was just too. A knife, a knife. I was just too nervous, nervous to ten, know what to do. Die. Yeah, and uh, that fucker locked me in the closet. Shit. Uh, but I had knew he was not a hardened guy because he was kind of nervous. But I was too young to even know, and yeah, I don't know. I probably yeah. was big enough to fuck him up. But was he a cracky? You think <clears throat> it was probably new little, crack. It was probably new. Do, a little, uh, little desperate. So what? Mom came home and had to get let you out of the closet. Yeah, and she was mad that she had to come home. <laughs> <It> was gangster. <laughs> <laughs> she was gangster. mad at you. She was kind of mad that I let this little <laughs> motherfucker lock me in the closet. She said, "How many were there? It was just one." This is terrible. <laughs> I know, it's so, this is terrible. I'm so glad shit. I gave you a gift today. I'm so glad today's the day I gave you the I gift. I cannot believe how terrible this shit is. It's horrendous. You know what it is? It's not wisdom. It's, uh, here's, here's what it is. Okay. And I want every, women, men are like everybody to understand this. And I'm not even talking about relationships, just in life. You feel something as a person, you feel it. And our instinct nowadays is to, uh, when you feel something that's counter, counter uh, culture or you feel something that's against the status quo, you, you go, ooh, that's not, a, that's not the popular feeling or that's not the feeling I should have. Let me eradicate that feeling. Let me get that out of there. Let me pretend it doesn't exist. And then you keep having those feelings, and now it's an issue. Then those feelings either become fear or they become resentment, or they become uh, hatred, because you're living with, with a feeling that you're not discussing, and you're not, you're not, uh, uh, it's not, it's not therapeutic if you don't get those things out of you. The fucking truth hurts. Look, medicine, medicine is interesting. 
If you have a cold, there's two kind of medicines you can take. You can take cherry flavored Robitussin, <laughs> or you can take Buckley's. Okay. And if you've ever had Buckley's, you would think that Buckley's was poison. You would think you took a, a shot of poison. It's so horrid. But you feel better tomorrow. Cherry flavored rubber test might take you three days. So you can I can give it to you in cherry flavored rubber tussin, but if I give it to you in Buckley's, you'd be fine right after. You'd be fine right now. You'll start to feel better because you know that here here it is in your face. But if I give it to you with with a little cherry in it, then you're like, um, okay, okay, and then you can feel better, but you really won't get better. It'll just taste better. We don't care. We just do that shit. We, we care because we're supposed to. I only care when people like are around me. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> 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 I'm gonna stop lying. You know, it's, it's I mean, it's difficult to tell the truth, but you got to start telling the truth because it kills you. It takes something out of, out, out of you when you are phony. You know, I'd rather die than be phony, really, because it, it kills me. And I'm, it's not worse. Like, I'm depressed, but I'm not suicidal. Do you know how, like, horrible resistance that is, is being wanting to kill yourself, but you just can't, you won't kill yourself? Do you understand what that is? So I have to figure out a way to make myself happy. And that's not to lie, you know? You could be smarter. I listen to you. I'm like, God damn, that motherfucker's smart. And I go, I don't think I'm as learned as you, but I don't feel inferior. I'm like, tell me something. I don't try to, you don't see me on Fox trying to make sure I go, see in the, the constriction of the situation. Because I don't have access to that many di words right. in the dictionary. So I'm doing me. Right. I have an opinion. I, have a, I never respect people who read something and then repeat it back to me. Like, that's intelligence. That, I, I like somebody that takes what they read and then they come up with some abstract thought of their own. That's impressive. Being informed is not impressive to me. I, I can tell you, well, if you didn't hear what happened in Uganda. Nope, not really, nigga, because I, I had trouble, you know, paying my car note. We were just talking about horrible movies that come on uh, the Sci-Fi Channel, the Sci-Fi original movies are so utterly bad. The special effects <laughs> are terrible. Is Debbie Gibson in that? Is yeah. that Debbie Lorenzo Gibson? Lorenzo Lamas and there's Mega Shark. Mega Shark versus what? The, the name of the movie is called Giant Octopus versus Mega Shark. They couldn't even give Giant Octopus a cool name. They just called it Giant Octopus. Ready from uh, GenericShow.com writes, uh, Opie, the company that makes this also makes the movies that rip off blockbuster movies like Patrice was saying. Oh. The company made Transmorphers. Transmorphers? <laughs> I'm trying to rip off. <laughs> if you, and they do part twos. Of movies that were good, oh, right, and to completely fuck them up. You think some of these big stars they get uh, cast for these movies, like, oh fuck, the concept's great, it's fucking. And then shark. they realize what and it then, is, and they do all their acting because they can't see the special effects, and then they finally see it for the first time and go, holy oh. shit, I'm in a piece of shit. It's movie. Like, yeah, we're gonna green screen you in over right, here. Right. Just uh, look, look up here, like, and they're probably picturing these effects are gonna look like fucking. They're amazing. all thinking Jurassic Park, like, like they, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jurassic like Park they don't movie. know that the movie. I think that. Do they know if the movie is going to be going shitty right sci-fi? Do you think they know that? That is a great question, man. I bet you they're thinking state-of-the-art special effects. Good. This is it. If Dude, I get a fucking script, though. Movie. Next thing you know, they show a big giant shark uh, uh, biting the, the uh, Golden Gate <laughs> Bridge <laughs> in half. And you're like, if, oh, and you're fuck, calling your family suicide. and apologizing. <laughs> if I get a script, right? <laughs> if I get a script and the script says giant octopus versus mega shark, it, it, I gotta know it stinks. I would say this better Why? be the working title, motherfucker. Th think some of the other crazy movies out there that ended up becoming no huge blockbusters. No good movies have <laughs> fucked up titles. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. Park? That's a fucking shitty movie. What about Not Jurassic Park? Eight. That's a great yeah, but the fucking name. That's a great name before you know that the movie was going to be a 2020, no. Jurassic yeah, Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jurassic you Park is Jurassic a Park. great name. Nah, man. Jurassic you Park think? is good, yeah. Because the sci-fi movies would name it Dinosaur Forest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking argument. One for Patrice. How do I, how do I come back from that? <laughs> you ain't watching Dinosaur Forest. <laughs>
It's stupid. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, let's go with a few more then, Patrice. <laughs> Fuck, I got to think of a couple movies now. Uh, God damn, that's a good one. Because I watch uh, these movies, they're always named stupid, man. Sci-fi, yeah. Think of it like a Jurassic Park movie. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, they're bottom line fuck. people, man. Why can't bottom we line. The other ones. It would well, be Jaws. How about like Star, yeah, yeah. Star, Star Trek. Jaws? He's got Jaws. Teeth. <laughs> teeth. <laughs> Just teeth. What would uh? All right. I, wait, wait. Let me tell you something. There's uh, a movie that they have. Yeah. About evil, evil attacking fucking birds. You know what it's called? Call. <laughs> no. Call. All right. What would right. what would sci-fi call? Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh, all right. Thank oh, you, I Charles. got one. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> they go Alien Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good name. Alien right. Mountain. Patrice. Aliens are visiting us. Yeah. All right. We're going to put you to the or test. Or they would name it the sound of the doo-doo. It would be called doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo. <laughs> Sci-Fi Network finds five alien notes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> alien notes. <laughs> they, they, close Encounters right. of the Third Kind is a great. Yeah, yeah. All right, this group's fucking great. Uh, we got Matt in West Virginia. Uh, Patrice Iron Man. Steel dude. <laughs> Fuck, that's what Matt had too. Steel guy. Steel, steel, steel guy. Steel. Matt had steel guy. Very good. <laughs> They suck! Did we do Star Wars yet? Oh, no. Star Wars. Mm. Galactic fighting. <laughs> 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 How about the Terminator? I, and now, they had a term, and they called it they called it Robot, robot Hunter. I was going to say Robot Killer from robot the Future. Okay. I'm telling you, yes. Right. Robot yeah. Killer, and then name parentheses, yeah. from the future. From the future. <laughs> How about Planet yeah. of the Apes is pretty much Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Pla yes. It's like Planet of Apes. They'd probably take that out of it. <laughs> Planet of Apes. Nope, they would call it Simeon Wars. This is sci-fi. <laughs> we we'll yeah, call Planet Apes Simeon, Simeon Simeons Wars. versus humans. Uh, Mars attacks would be Red Chaos from Beyond. <laughs> it, it, it's awful. They, this, they have this, to use the word Beyond one. a lot, too. This is a tough yeah. one. Twelve Monkeys. Twelve fucking Monkeys. Twelve Monkeys was a good movie. Eek, eek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, and that's no bullshit. I'm gonna get a job naming these fucking movies. Oh shit! Do we do aliens? Eek, eek. See what they what they would do with aliens is some of these movies they name they don't name okay the the concept they'll name what the they'll name the place where the concept is happening. Uh -huh. So if it's an alien type movie and it's happening say on a boat, mm -hmm. they call it Alien Boat. <laughs> <laughs> and am I bullshitting, no, though? Am I bullshitting? It's, it's They'll call accurate. it Alien Boat. <laughs> it's a, alien it's boat. a great bit. How about uh, The Matrix? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. The Matrix. <laughs> Cyber Runners. <laughs> <laughs> Cyber would be in it. Cyber has to be in it. because that's Cyber a... would definitely be yeah. in it. You know what? It, ready? It, and it'll be, it'll be nice and... St <laughs> Cyber... Chaos. <laughs> Someone just put help. cyber oh, chaos. No. <laughs> Someone just wrote, "Help! I'm trapped in the computer." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I'm sorry oh, I missed so your name. Nice. That's fucking funny, man. Really funny. <laughs> help! I'm trapped in the computer. And the follow-up called, "Your bullets are slow." <laughs> <laughs> How about? <laughs> So already oh, sounds kind of sci-fi. Back to the future. Oh, Back to the Future. Oh, that's yeah. got to be an easy one. Because the they would have probably stole it if they stole that. Yeah. Time car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Time car. I like time car. Time Ready? Car. Yeah. yeah. Future change. <laughs> future change. <laughs> future change. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Future change. Fucking uh, Patrice, right so, on. Right the fuck on. That is so Premiering at Saturday bad. at 9 o'clock. Future change. And you can totally picture it. Totally fucking picture it. Predator. Very good uh, arch from Long Island. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Predator. That has to be Space That's Hunter. Something with a hunter. Space in it. Hunter. Uh, definitely. They, they yeah. would just call it. just be. It'll be jungle. <laughs> Yeah. It'll be Space Jungle <laughs> Hunter. Space Jungle Hunter. 
<laughs> no bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. You guys nailed it. Good movies Fucking have good titles, it. man. They just do. Patrice, you got to tell your story. Oh, shit. You want me to... <laughs> Dude, that is a funny fucking story, man. <laughs> that is a really funny fucking story. <laughs> Listen to what happened to Patrice oh, since the last time we saw him. Yeah, it was like it was like Christmas time. I was I had drove driven home, went to uh, you know go to Boston for a second. So I'm driving back, <clears throat> driving back through you know Connecticut. You know you know you know you drive and you get that that I'm um, that scared tired like that tired that you just. You go, oh my God, I'm getting ready to die. You're tired. Yeah. Like, like you, you don't have any more confidence in yourself that you can keep yourself like awake. You go, like you, You're no, like, oh damn. It's cold, so the, all the windows are down. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking yeah. young Jeezy. Yeah, I'm up, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Blasting, <laughs> punching your leg. And just that type of tired where yep. I went to sleep a couple of times. Oof, so I said, I got to find. Some I was getting ready to pull over to the side. Do you start uh, having the logic in your head where you're like, ah, I could close my eyes for five seconds? <laughs> Jeez, Man, not when you're driving. It, no, I, you've never done that. No, no I've no. sat there. Oh, I've done that. Petrified, like, just like Patrice is talking. Oh, I, I think I could give it just <laughs> all right, just two seconds. No. <laughs> <laughs> I sit there with, with your eyes open, going, "Motherfucker, you gotta stay you've awake." You've never negotiated Drive. with yourself. No, no, I have, but it's and been, said, "I think nope. I could do a couple seconds here." No. Because you're so tired no. that your logic is starting to go? Mm. No, my logic goes in a different way. Where, where you're driving, your eyes are open, you, you're watching the road, and you're going, motherfucker, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. Stay awake. All right. Stay awake. And, th and then, like, oh, trees, road, sky. Ooh. Yeah, and you're just out, and then what the fuck? I was just telling you to stay awake, asshole. At, like at first, first you're driving, and your hand is at the bottom. You know, at where you, where you fit, your hand is pointed up, and it's you're, uh -huh. you're controlling at the bottom. Of the of the bottom of the, then when you get those scares, you you put your left hand out the window, hang out the window, drive with your hand on the top. That's okay, I'm, I'm up now. Uh, no, I I'm that kind yep. of horrified, tired. So I gotta stop. I do the Harvey Keitel fucking Reservoir Dogs chant to myself. You gotta stay awake. <laughs> Come on. I smack myself in the face. Stay awake. Stay awake. <laughs> You're gonna fucking stay awake. I don't know how, like the truck drivers, they must oh. know tricks to. Yeah, they know tricks, all right. It comes in a bottle. Or it comes in fucking <laughs> a piece of tin foil or whatever the fuck. Oh shit! It's called oh crystal methadrine. <laughs> See, I'm corny. I really am a corny motherfucker. Because I'm thinking, boy, those guys, man, how do they do it? Cocaine. Coke, crystal meth, whatever <laughs> keeps you fucking going. Whatever gets the load there on time. Oh my god! <laughs> keeps you from wrapping up a family of I'm five. I'm sitting there thinking they must have. Oh, they 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 channel Yum Curry, the magical <laughs> truck god that gives them energy and strength. You know? Truck god. <laughs> truck god. <laughs> The truck god. Yeah, that's a truck god. You snort it through a straw. You smoke it. <laughs> Whatever. Oh my god. So I saw driving and shit, and I and I and I go. I see a McDonald's in the in the distant. You know. Oh shit. <sighs> McDonald's a uh, fucking rest stop. Yeah. So I just do ninety five. Try to get there. Pull in there. Park. I go. Thank God. I lean my seat back. Now you know. What I time drive. What time is this about? About three in the morning. Oh, I always oh, leave. Way to go, Mr. Jordan. Wow. I, <laughs> way to go, Mr. I, Jordan. I, I just always leave late. I just always just go go there and come back like leave at twelve. Yeah. No traffic. I kind of like the no traffic angle. Yeah. No traffic. Go down, go down to Merritt or ninety five from time to time. Yeah. So I so I park. I'm parked there. I put my seat back. Now I drive a, a suburban and it's is is niggered up big time. Like you know <laughs> I got I got twenty twos just so I don't fuck because I drive in New York. I would get 24s, yeah. but, you know, the potholes fuck your shit up, so <laughs> I got tent that's, like, as black as anything, you know, and the whole nine, so, you know, I, I put my seat back, whoo, thank God, put my um my skylight up, I look in the sky, shit, just fall asleep, I lean back. You're probably out in, like, two seconds? About two seconds, yeah. but for some reason, you know, after about good five minutes of sleeping, I just, my, my eyes open, nothing woke me up. Just my eyes open. Right? Not a sound, nothing. I just like <sighs> open your eyes. Oh, boy. I look to the left. Then I look to my right, out my passenger side. There's a guy looking in my window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Clean cut white guy. Amber Crombie and Fitch. Fucking, yeah. <laughs> fucking ties. Clean. And, and I'm looking at him. And Did I'm you staring jump at him. Or? No. No. I don't get scared like that. Like, 
I can't mo- fucking movie have Movie fear anybody. fucks me up. Like, you know, creepy nah, shadow figures. But, like, people don't. Dude, fucking any... If I open my eyes and someone's there or, or something... Bad nah, you, you gotta try to stay cool. Oh. You gotta understand how tinted my windows are. Oh, yeah. You gotta understand this. Now, I look at them to try to give them, like... For 30 seconds, we're looking at each other. Like, <laughs> Just kind of staring. So I, I finally go, okay, this nigga ain't leaving. I, I, I turn my key backwards, crack, crack my window about an inch. I go, what, what, what's up, man? He goes, it's cold out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's cold. It's cold out. I go, it's I go, cold I go, out. I go, I go, I go, what? He goes, <coughs> it's cold out here. And he, and he tries my handle. Oh, my door. He pulls my door handle. Holy shit. It's cold out here. Pulls my door. I said, what? Well, go inside. (laughs) I go, go, well, go inside. It's coffee in there. Now, I'm sitting there not thinking anything except for this is some crazy motherfucker who needs warmth. And I'm going, well, you know, I'm sorry, dude, but, you know, you're not going to warm up in my fucking car, you know? He thought you were a gangster fan. And so he walks away. I'm looking at him. And I'm still not. My my energy still isn't like what the fuck. I'm just like that was weird. You That's know, a little from odd, New York. Right. You know, yeah. So this I watch him. This motherfucker gets into a Subaru Outback with a Christmas tree on top. <laughs> And drives away, and oh, that's when, man. that's when the adrenaline kicked. I said, "This motherfucker, he was going, he was going to suck strange black dick before he went home to take a Christmas tree to his <laughs> fucking family." <laughs> <laughs> it gave me. It was like drinking fourteen cups of coffee and a Red Bull. Oh, you were awake. Once I said. This guy was a fag? I didn't know. I thought he was just a creepy cold guy. Creepy. <laughs> He's a creepy cold guy. A little I cold. Said, I, I, I felt so bad for women that this <coughs> guy, I wanted to, it was almost like I let uh, something evil escape. Like I wanted right, to right. follow him and, and, and just go warn to his everybody, lair right. and go, this guy is smam. Your husband is trying to suck strange <laughs> gangster cock. And it 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 was a, and it was just like Gangsta Fag song. It was a well dressed, fucking businessman type sucking wow. dick at a Connecticut restaurant. White dude. Wow. It was un. It's cold out here. What? It's cold out here. That's something that you say. And pulls my fucking my handle like on my door. You felt like you let something evil escape. It, it like felt that. like I let him. Like I said, I should have. Like, for the duty of the world, like, just chase this guy. Because you think the family he's bringing that fucking Christmas tree oh home my has God. any clue? That their husband is sucking rest stop dick and has a rest stop code. Like, I'm going, if I was a fag, is that the code? It's cold out here. <laughs> right. Oh. The, the pigeons fly in January. <laughs> Hop on in, faggot. Hop on it. Click. <laughs> the door unlocks. <laughs> click, click. You think he drove you know away with password. Christmas music in his car? And then, and then like, he gets huh? in and rubs his hand like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it really Ooh. was cold out there. Yeah, that yeah. was the fat code, but it's yeah. chilly. I'm just cold. <laughs> Thanks for helping a brother out. <laughs> what? That's what got me was the Subaru Outback, and I just covered my With mouth the Christmas like, tray. like I just let I let evil go. I let it go. I let it. I should have followed really him, dude. Honey, bro. honey, I'm home with the tree. With the Get the kid. tree. And he, with the dude. It, I shouldn't even care about shit like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it seems so evil. Man. Yeah. So fucking evil. Wow. Wow. Well, it's cold out here. It's cold out here. Well, anyone ask that? <laughs> Way to read the signs, though, you dummy. I'm such a. I'm so. Fu- I'm a fag. You told him so going. Stupid. You told me going to the McDonald's. Like, yeah, yeah, like that yeah. wouldn't be your well, first like, thought if you were I'm really get cold. my dick sucked in <laughs> McDonald's. Wait a minute. Yes, but John, listen. The, Fuck. I, thank you, Patrice. I was really stupid. I wasn't sure if I should go into this really Obi. warm building in your car. And now that you're telling me, Obi. of course I should go in the building. I deserve the pounding you're about to give me. But it's like none you're, of my. Reaction was you fucking faggot. It was. It, it's cold out here, huh? Oh, well. And my mind was trying to think of a way, and this is what I was thinking: not get out of here, fag. It was. Hey, I, I, I can't. I can't let you warm up in my car. Yeah. I mean, God bless you. You're cold, you. and it's a cold day, but. <laughs> <laughs> Go inside. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't tell the, the guy. Spirit. What? Did they uh, lose their heat in there? Uh, yeah, what? What? You need some money for coffee? <laughs> yeah, you dummy. <laughs> wow.
<laughs> Someone's making a great point here, Brian in Rhode Island. Go ahead. Uh, Brian, go ahead. Hey, uh, didn't this, didn't Patrice say that it was like 3 in the morning? What the hell is this guy doing out getting a Christmas tree at 3 in the morning? That's a that's, <laughs> Dude! This is the it might whole. Have, it might have been his prop. <laughs> the whole evil was going through my head, yeah. like, "Honey, I'm, I'm on the way. I work late. I'm yep. on the way home from blah blah blah." Dude, <laughs> it, he had a family because he had a Suba room yeah. out back and a Christmas tree on top. No, it's like it was so. After that is when it kicked in. The creepiness of it kicked in then. And I thought of it. What the fuck are you doing out here with a Christmas tree at three? You just come in. Well, hey, it's four, honey. You know, I picked up a Christmas tree from the all-night Christmas tree place yeah. up on Connecticut Boulevard. And this mother, man, dude, it, 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 it's cold out here. He was on some kind of fucking little business thing where he tells the wife, you know, I'm, I'm going to be working late. He's just perusing black men porno sites getting himself all worked up has the christmas tree it's three in the morning he figures he better get home and then he sees the rest stop here we go <laughs> and you're just the prize I was right a, there i was i was the your grand prize merry mm. fucking christmas you might as well have put a bow around your fucking a mistletoe <laughs> on your belt buckle oh, 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 oh. here's a black gentleman for you it's coming out Oh, 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 oh. oh, shit. And what do you want, successful white man? <laughs> I'd like a black gangster cock <laughs> right here in the rest stop. And, and, I, and I am so, like, if you don't know me, you know, you know I just like to dress, like, dress the part. Yeah. But, you know, I'm a comedian. But my whole out thing is like, uh, you know, giant black dude. I'm in a tinted up truck. I got my damn my hoodie on, my this and that. Yeah, the and this first guy's... impression of that would be I'm not walking up to his fucking vehicle and asking directions. I'm not. I'm not going for legitimate purposes to your fucking vehicle and knocking on the window while you're sleeping. And he just was looking like just this. the I, stare. I can't, I can't even like. Describe was it crazy it man radio. stare? It was just looking. That I, stare of wanting. <laughs> to wanting. But then when he <laughs> said his when he when he made his wanting. move. When he made, made, his, his move. made his move, he didn't look at me. He turned to the so his his profile was at my window. His so, good side. So when I when I rolled the window down a little bit, what's up? And it just he didn't look me in the eye. He just he didn't have the common decency to, to look, look you me in the eye, eye to ask for the cock. That's cold out here. It's cold out here. Personally, I think college is a, a waste of your time. Holla! That's what I say. All it ever did was mess up my credit, and it, it does <laughs> nothing. All it does is no. teach people how to be have credit problems, and it teaches people of different ethnic groups how to sleep with each other. Like, that would have never been able to. <laughs> oh, good. Send a them. Mongolian and a Jamaican. It you know has what? A, <laughs> you know what? That's what they met in college. That's but about it. It's a hell of a party though for four years, five years. It's just, it's nonsense. I don't. Cases, I six. think most most <laughs> people. You know what college teaches people? How to work for other people. It doesn't teach. It destroys mm -hmm. dreams. If you have any dream, like if you, anybody in here right now, if they went to college, and we, or if you talk to somebody that thought about college, you would not be doing what you're doing. If you go, hey, listen, I want to be a successful radio person. Somebody would go, you're a jerk. Go to, <laughs> go to college. But college does not do anything to help you better yourself. No. Nothing. One thing I learned about this game early is it's a lonely game. It's a lonely journey. It's really hard. Like, I, I was, my mother didn't support me. She supports me now. But it's one of them things, it's like, this shit is a dream. And, you know, you ever try to, Dreams are something you do by yourself. You ever have a dream and then try to tell somebody the dream you had? You wake up and be like, hey, here's what I was dreaming. And they be like, really, really? So, <laughs> unicorns and then what happened? <laughs> That's the same thing as saying, I want to do something besides be what's already planned out. Plumber, doctor, lawyer, you know, dentist, there's a plan. This thing here is like a leap of faith and you just keep falling. Now, to answer your question, what I'm trying to do is be righteous. And I, when I say righteous, I don't mean God, you know, God righteous. I mean, just when I wake up, I know I was honest to myself. You know what I mean? And it, it, look, not everything is for everybody. It's like sometimes, you know, the whole idea of carrying somebody or pulling somebody up, you'd be pulling yourself down. It's like mm -hmm. the world spins. If I if I spin, okay, you if you're if you're a sad sack, and I go, all right, man, I'm a 
you stay here, be sad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going for both of us. Then when I come back around the second time, I go, "Are you ready to come with me?" And you're still sitting there, like, I said, "Look, gotta go, brother. I'm sorry, I gotta leave you to fucking die." So. <laughs> Patrice is probably one of my favorite guests you guys have. He, he, you operate on such a different level. Like, I'm sitting here in the car listening, and I'm, I'm listening to the way you're explaining it, and it all sounds like, yeah, yeah, that could work. Absolutely. <laughs> and then you go home and, and sit, <laughs> sit your wife down. <laughs> sit her down and, and go, this is what I learned today. My girlfriend, if I was trying to explain this to my girlfriend, yeah. it would probably end the relationship. Of okay? course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's exactly what people are thinking, though, in their head. Like, oh, all right, Patrice makes a lot of. I'm going to go home and talk to her it's right like, now. No, I could finally. You know I just got to keep exactly the way he said it in my head and go home. And then he come home and go, I want to fuck other chicks with you. It's like, wait, Patrice said it better. Wait a minute. I, me, fuck, because I'll cheat anyway. No, wait. <laughs> I <laughs> just get it all fucked up. The divorce papers are in your hand oh, the next yeah, day. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> now you're in hell for the next 20 years. Like, there's a lot of guys who was a mixture of Kurt Cobain without the tendons. I said, there's no great. I told somebody, shit, I think it was at Comedy Central in a meeting. I said, there's nobody great who wasn't fucked up, man. Yeah, can be, Look at anybody in, in, in art. Any on any level, yep. an artist they'll, they'll never go. Oh, I'm They're so insane. Happy. There's nobody. I'm insane, man. I like. I can't. <laughs> I, I'm like. I try to not be because it makes life easier. Right. But I'm like. I'm insane, man. I'm. I'm insane. I'm telling you. I know guy. Colin Quinn is insane. Nick DePaulo's insane. <laughs> Norton is insane. <laughs> Opie and Anthony are insane. Do you, Howard do Stern is insane. Have... They're insane. Everybody that is pressing things and pressing buttons and making people uncomfortable and a tell, insane. I know <laughs> Dave Attell. He's insane. Do you have to have that that inner kind of that? No, so I don't you, think you don't want it. See, insane people don't want it. I don't want that. A lot of things going on when there's a dynamic of a mob. It's a mob dynamic. It's a lot. It's a people sitting there watching you, and they want to be manipulated. You know, you're dealing with a lot of people that want to be manipulated into forgetting that they're having a tough time, or they. That's what it is. It's manipulation, dude. Laughter is something that people don't do because they want to do. They kind of. They're kind of. Uh, made to do so it's manipulation it's just like you know somebody sitting there like you might come out and you know i don't like your face you just look like somebody that looked like a nigga that robbed me when i was a kid you gotta make the right choice you gotta read the crowd you gotta hope they want to laugh it's it's it's, it's real uh instinctive it's real na uh, native shit you know what i mean it is it's like you you come out and um you just go i don't like this dude and then now i gotta manipulate you into not liking me and into laughing you know, that's a that's serious and without letting you know it, you know, by just my words to arbitrary people, really I'm talking to you. But if this was fifty people out here, I might be talking to you, but they all listening and you representing them. So if you like me then it'll trickle over to that one. It's 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 mental. It's a lot of mental shit going on with this game. It's a serious thing. That's why sometimes comics are not happy, you know, because that's what we give it. You catch a comic and it's always you know, you think a motherfucker's ready to just be funny. That's what they do, but that's not what they do. You you leave a little piece of you. You gotta rest, man. You, it's tiring as you give all of you. You know, and they give you some fuel too, but you giving really. You know, you don't go home as a comic and go, oh man, that girl laughed at this time. This way she laughed. They go home. They take you with them, and you know they take a little. They take you with them, and that's some that's heavy shit. That's one of the things I like about being a dude. Like, the one thing is that we have so many void fillers. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I, I my birthday was yesterday. And I'm, I, Happy I just, birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. So, I'm, I'm, I'm 37. In, in white years, I'm 90. <laughs> I was going to say. That was the, I'm 99. <laughs> I'm glad you did it to yourself because I was going right for it. Oh, that's horrible. I'm a 99-year-old white man. <laughs> it, isn't the life expectancy for you guys oh, like 33? It, it's <laughs> like, I'm a, I'm, I really am. I should have a cane right now. You're an OG. I, should, <laughs> I really did live, uh, you know, past where, you know, whatever. <laughs> 
I don't want to die yet, too. No, no. It's not no. credit. I want to. <laughs> two years ago, I'm like, baby, I'm ready to go out. Ba-. You know, I'm standing on the thing with two guns, like, come yeah. on, kill me, baby. I, but but uh, <laughs> it's like I still sit there. And you know, you figure, you know how you, you know, get, you not, you're immature. Grow up. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there on on my on my little chair playing, you know, fear or yeah, you know, a Rainbow Six. Or, exactly. Or, it's just you sitting there. I was talking about how you know I was talking about on stage how how guys. One of the th- good things about guys that people just don't understand is that we just we have no shame. We we have so much fun that means nothing. Like right. I, I daydreamed I was a Hall of Fame running back the, the other day for four hours, like for four hours, and I wasn't asleep. It was a daydream. I was completely up. Oh, and I just was great. looking in the air, and I was shaking people, and I and I dreamt I was this this dude named um. Remember the dude from Roll Warrior, the villain from the Roll Warrior? Humongous or hum, the humongous? Humongous. Yeah. And I, I'm <laughs> Lord of the Wasteland, humongous. I'm so my, the was, Ayatollah <laughs> of Rock and Roller. <laughs> and so I'm thinking I'm this dude named Humongous, right? Playing football. I don't talk. No one knows. <laughs> I don't speak. I'm. They, someone found me, and they just unleashed me on football. Right, right. I, oh I was this football God. player named Humongous, and I'm Humongous. putting people in the hospital, and people were. They trying to interview me. I don't talk, and I wear a mask just like the humongous. And it's just a daydream. <laughs> for four hours, man. And I just woke up out of that daydream, you know, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And I didn't go, what did I do in my life? I just was like, ah, yeah. oh, man. You're like, hey, that's really good. Man, I wish I could be the humongous for real. <laughs> God, that is something. Cause it... William Shatner. Oh, William Shatner. I'm so, still trying to get you to do the William Shatner. He, he, he fucking, him and his wife. <laughs> yeah. So he's talking to me after he goes, Patrice, oh, fantastic, all right? I go, thank you, sir. He goes, yeah, very good. Oh, it was, it was, wow, yeah. I was like, like, yeah. he's really liking the fact where you're shouting his, like, into me, right? Captain Kirk. So we're walking, and they, everybody's getting in their cars. Whoever's going to the after party, the after party's on, on site, and whoever's going home is going home. So him and his wife were kind of going home. I think her name is Liz. So him and Liz was coming, and he was... Liz, you know, they love each other. You know, old white couple that love each other. They just <laughs> He's eighty something. They're amazing. And yeah. she might be f- in her fifties, maybe. Like something chi- like that. Chippy. Nice, that- you know, Hollywood looking, you know, good looking <laughs> lady, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, whatever. <laughs> so they're talking and he goes, Oh, and I go, Hey man, you, she says, Did you have fun? I just that's, I said I'm starting to have fun. This was after. I'm like I'm, Yeah, yeah. I, I think I am. I'm starting to relax. I, I'm starting to relax. And he goes, oh, okay, well, try to relax. You know, I said, I'm trying, I'm trying so hard, man, but I can't stop being miserable. I'm so trying not to be miserable. He goes, oh, and here comes his wife. Uh, hi, oh, um, he goes, didn't, honey, honey, didn't you think Patrice was great? She said, yeah. She said, he, wasn't he your favorite? No, um, Jeff Ross was, you know. She, so that was super uh, uh, honest, right? Yeah. So she starts, I, she, he goes, honey, I'm just talking to Patrice about uh, being, you know, miserable and trying to be happy. And, and she goes, she goes, oh, you know, it's probably testosterone, right? And she goes, you know, when guys start to lose their testosterone, because that's what makes them go, um, they get angry. And, I, and I'm like, hmm. And then he goes, but honey. Patrice, she goes, oh, but he shouldn't worry about that because he's young. He goes, but honey. <laughs> Patrice has diabetes, and that stops you from producing all the things you need in your body. <laughs> she goes, oh, that's probably why he's so, so tame. Oh, my <laughs> God. This conversation with each other about how my body oh my is breaking God. down. <laughs> breaking down. <laughs> And I have less testosterone and less <laughs> madness. But they weren't being cruel. It was just, he, oh. he's sick and can't produce. <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And so he, he gives me a hug. You were great, uh, young man. Gets in there, fucking limo, hey. and I'm welling up. You're like, motherfucker. Because <laughs> I'm realizing, oh, oh, God, it's not just, I'm just an angry dude. And my body's making me angry. I've, my testosterone is gone. Leave my- the poor man alone. Yeah. He's had enough. <laughs> it's and I'm like, I'm just- bones, bones, check him out. He's on death's door. It, they had a ten minute conversation. <laughs> oh my god! How, right in front of you. Why I was just miserable, and it was so. It was human. It wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't trying to hurt me. It was just trying. It was just like. 
Oh. That's fine. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Hope I made your night better. Liz is like, oh, bye. Okay, I'll, bet they, I'll bet you they Warp do that to one. I'll bet you they have that conversation with everybody. They find something. I bet you they're like, oh, we got him pretty good. Oh, they leave <laughs> laughing. They probably oh. do that to Jeff Ross about something else. Well, you're oh. a Jew. Jews aren't supposed to feel good after 30. Jeff's <laughs> <laughs> crying. Oh. And there's Shatner and his wife well laughing. I, I, I'm not lying. Cause it was like I started going, is that it? Cause I'm, I'd be like, I'd be mad all the fucking time. I'm like, D is it test uh. my, my testosterone is going? And she just was like, now you know how it feels about like menopause. Oh she's like, damn, she's she like, was saying, yeah, cause she was like, yeah. that's what happens to women. Menopause makes us miserable. Why doesn't Bill Shatner talk to people who've known you for 15 years? You're the exact same guy I met 15 years ago. <laughs> what do you think? That, what do you think you were charming when we met, and all of a sudden you got angry? You've that's been terrible not, for a long time. Dude, I'm really, I'm, I'm still in my heart a pimp. I'm really trying to listen to you, and I just keep fading off into when we used to shop for alligator shoes. And I still got them, but it's it, but you can't wear. Let me tell you what. I'm gonna tell you how she pads. got me. I'm gonna tell you how she got me. If she didn't have a daughter, she'd be in yeah. deep trouble. But I told you that. If she didn't yeah. have a daughter, that ain't even my kid, by the way. Yeah, it doesn't matter. When I first met, I was like, "I eh, beat it, other guys sack." <laughs> Hi, 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 Mr. P. Beat it. I don't like you. Somebody else humped your mama and out you came. What do I need you? I don't even want to talk to you for. you talking to me. Get this thing out of here. Oh, I treat your mother like garbage. Go to your daddy. But oh, ultimately, they, they get under your skin. I'm helping her with math. Oh, and she's you. just and like, she's... yay. And I see my math training techniques working. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there going, oh, you. You make me sick. I love this kid. Uh, I had got rid of her. A long time. Yeah. Years mm -hmm. ago. Or not even get rid of her. Because I told my girl I'm not ever going to get rid of her. I'm just demoting her back mm. down to hoe. <laughs> she messes up. You're being dem Give me them stripes. Sad. You're a hoe again. Uh. And now you have to work your way up back to Mrs. Ho. <laughs> just private hoe. <laughs> Yeah, I'll bump you down the private. We talked. We talked about this before. I was like, that kid will get under your skin. She makes me sick that I'm. I I, I care about the kid. And here's here's her mother. She. I bought the kid like she she's in the in the supermarket pimping me. Mm. And and I'm and she's real cool. And, and you know we we go in the supermarket. and She goes, Mister P. Um, you know I was thinking my birthday's in in nine months. <laughs> and I need a I need an iPod. So I'm like. I'm like, ask your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> ask your daddy for a damn iPod. Oh, Mr. P. She introduced me to one of her friends. This is my stepdad, Mr. P. And, and she like, mm. introduced me as he's half famous. <laughs> Which is really, he's half a celebrity. That's kind of accurate. Though. And she introduced me as that. And I go like this. <laughs> I go like this. I said to her, I said, I looked at her, right? I didn't even say nothing to her. She said, this is my stepdad. And I looked at her like, Urgh. and she goes, oh, shut up. You know you're my stepdad. I went, man, nah, right. <laughs>be mm. with that kid. Mm -hmm. I understood why. You did. Because I jerk off. Because my part of the bargain doesn't His mean shit to me. In you or on you. It doesn't matter. Our part of the bargain is not special to us. That's how, because I'm just a nut. He, he didn't love my mother. He, I was a nut. That's how I know why a guy, and I'm not saying I would do that, but I can understand how a man could get a woman pregnant and never have a connection See, to I that child. Understand. A father, I just never had a, an adult man older than me that could just, I could just look at like, this is my mentor. I started getting emotional. I'm getting emotional now because I, I went my whole life. This was recently. This is like last week. This is last week. Just now. 40 years old and I realized at 40, the concept of what a father was yeah, and that I didn't have it my whole life. And it's been killing me. Like I, when I first learned 
I finally learned that because I was always trying to be logical to what a, a look, a, a sp- let me tell you, it's easy to not be in a child's life. A sperm could go on the floor. It's in you. If you, if you come inside of a bitch you don't care about, it's the same thing as coming on the floor. So if you come inside of a woman that you don't want to be with, yeah. and she goes, I'm pregnant, yeah. you go, well, th- you know, th- here's the sperm, bitch. Yeah. So I realized anybody could be my father. I didn't have even a father figure, a mentor. I was raised by other men that I watched. Um, right, people to, you picked that you identified with. That you I saw, just watched and saw, said, saw he's strength cool, in. let me try to copy what he is. And but in that conversation with your mother, I mean, what you know, it was a sadness or anger? I mean, what, you it know, was sadness for her. It was sadness for me. It was sadness too, because I have a lot of issues with God. I, I, I really desperately want to believe in God. I desperately want to believe in, and I go for what I want out of life. And I, this makes I know this seems a like bullshit, but I just want. I'm the only one in my life of people that that I that can. I'm the only, unless somebody hits a lottery, I'm the only one for about seven or eight people that could help elevate life because I'm in show business and I've been in it 18 years. Uh, my mother works and she's going to work till she dies unless I make it. Um, my, one of my good friends, he works and he's going to work till he dies. My girl, she's she has a show business like heart, but you know, her kid, you know, a couple of comics that are good friends of mine. It's like, if it ain't me, dude, Who's it ain't gonna be, be nobody. What, what, what and I, you... I, I just want that. I just want it for them. I, I always thought to myself, like, uh, I could change now. I could go, okay, well, uh, I'm gonna take it in the ass. Like they say, you're supposed to in show business. I'm gonna take it in the fucking ass. Do whatever's necessary. Yeah. And if I take it in my ass now at 40, and realize, and realize that it wasn't, it's like this ain't so bad. I'm yeah. taking it in my ass. <laughs> I got a two million dollar check. My mother got a house, and my ass is. It ain't even that. It's just right in my ass. It's not even hurting. That. That I'm going to be even more miserable because I should have been some, I didn't have enough sense or a mentor to say, take it in your ass uh, yeah. at 20. Right. So I'm going to go, if I'm wrong now, I can't live with myself. I got to so ride this out. I got to ride this out. I got to ride it out. And I, and I don't know if it's going to pan out and I really would love for it to pan out, but it, it might not. And it made me sad because my mother, she's diabetic and I'm diabetic. Okay. And, uh, I cut my, my foot and I, I think this got me emotional too. Mm. I cut my foot and you know, you cut your foot as a diabetic. Um, it's dangerous. I cut my foot, you know, uh, the ravages of diabetes haven't started truly hitting me hardcore. Starting to hit my mom's, you know, feet looking bad and, uh, you know, she's limping and she's breaking down, watching her break down. Mm. And, uh, I cut my foot, man, and she, she jumped on, she just was mom. She cared about my fucking feet. And I'm looking at her feet, you know, swelled up, and, and and she just was making sure my feet were okay. And I'm just like, what, what for? Like, like, I suck. (laughs) I'm like, I suck. I go, my mother's still looking after my feet. And I'm like, I just want to look after her feet, but I would never motherly be able to look after her feet. I can only financially look after her feet. Get her the best foot doctor. Money's no object medicine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great bed. Yeah, yeah. Whatever techniques yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's what I need to do to look after her, but I don't have it like that. Yeah. And and this is the only way I'm going to get it. And uh, it's just too late for me to real. I'm realizing shit too late we're obviously trying to avoid so we just why all you guys are here as well um <sighs> well you know look we just we gotta <clears throat> yeah who wants to do this look we're, we're all here 
you know, um, to kind of, I guess, make a, um, to let people know that one of our really, really good friends um, fell ill, uh, fell sick. He um, <sighs> uh, Patrice, Patrice O'Neill um, um, had a stroke. It's just kind of we wanted to do it like, uh, you know, it was a week ago and we were trying to, the family wanted to kind of kept quiet and we understood why. So we, we've known since last Wednesday and we didn't want to, you know, out of respect for his mom and his wife, uh, didn't want to say anything. But it's getting to a point where people, are, comedians are starting to and it's kind the of. words getting out there. Words yeah. Out there. And uh, I think we all wanted it to kind of come from us saying it instead of some somebody on Twitter or somebody some blogger or some club owner you know I just you want something like this to come from from true scumbags yeah exactly yeah. True, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not like club owners right. <laughs> real real scumbags in this room <laughs> right but uh, we don't we don't know <clears throat> how he is I mean uh, you know it's too soon to tell I, I anybody that knows about strokes I mean it's it's it takes a while sometimes we just don't know yeah. um, we don't know how he's gonna be and please, it's tempting, I know, to, to try to reach out or whatever, but you got to let the family just alone. Please do. Um, yeah, don't try to find out where he is. Or try, we, we know that a lot of people loved Patrice. A lot of people, yeah. you know, even the people that didn't like him liked, liked him. him. Yeah. yeah, so right. he, he uh, you know, just let the, don't, for, for now, let the family. It's a hard time for them, so let don't try to find out where he is, and don't try to send anything. And there's a there's, we have, uh, an email address. You have an email. Set up an yeah. email address <laughs> if you want to if you want to send out well wishings, um, because he's being transferred anyway. We just don't know where. So if if you don't start sending cards and flowers, because it's going to wind up in a in a in a place that's it's this, he's not going to be at. Yeah. We have an email address if you want, and and his wife will uh, either get him access to it or she'll you know. Um, or she'll uh, read them to him. Uh, it's loveforpatrice at gmail dot com. So uh, if if you want to send well wishings and stuff, um, I'm sure she'll make sure that he gets them or as many of them as he can. Uh, you know, there was just no other way to to say it. You know, it's like how do you give this news to people? It's awful. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you know, this is not a memorial, and right. you know, yeah. we're not. No. This is not why yeah. these guys are in here. It's not like an, oh, this is to remember them. It's just to try to tell you what's going on, but. I didn't want to do it by myself. I don't think any of us wanted to do it by ourselves, and we kind of feel as a group. No, that totally makes sense. This you know, way, you want obviously. everybody to be a part of it. And right. If you know you guys, this is the way to do it. Yeah. And we just, we don't have any, we wish we had more news for you, but we just, <clears throat> uh, we don't. It happened last Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else want to say anything? Uh, 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 what can you say? No, it's too hard. I was thinking, you know, it's, and like you said, it's not a thinking. memorial. It's not a memorial, but I was thinking of, the things me and Patrice, I remember one time Patrice and I were walking from the comedy cellar back to our car. No, I'm just, I'm just okay. in the fun times. Said, it's not a memorial, it's just, it's but not, not a memorial. memorial. It's it's not a memorial. It's it's like, like, I but, remember. But, but, but Jeff, like, For people, more memories, people. go to Christian Comic on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that we got it out of the way, Patrice <laughs> had a stroke back to us. Uh, <laughs> well, he was on. All right, so you. Uh, let, let's let's see where this story is going. I'm just. I'm just I do I want to see where this is going because it won't be a memorial. It's going to be a horrid story. No, forget it. It's a memorial for Voss's career, but go ahead. No, you're on your way to the car from the cellar. Well, okay. And we just had a nice talk. See? Oh, wow. Know. That's a good one. No, that's not what happened, but... What happened? I, what do you Jesus, say? Rich, it, it's, just, it's so fucking sad. It's hard for us to talk about it because he's such Especially a good... Bonnie he's, married you. <laughs> he's, such, he's such a good friend. He's such a good friend. Uh, we know him. It's just... It's, it's too hard to fucking talk about, you know, on the air and, you know... With, without any answers, it's and, devastating. And stuff, you know, it's just whatever. Yeah. And and it's just it, it's hard. So, what can you say? What can you say? We we pray that everything works out. I want to make sure we get this out. The Patrice O'Neill benefit is next Tuesday at the New York City Center, and this is very important. Yeah. This is something that you're doing to, uh, this is going to raise money for Patrice O'Neill, one of the great, great, funniest stand-ups ever. Funniest comic I ever saw. Unfortunately, passed away. I'm going to try to get through this. And, um... Whew. 
Sorry. That's all right. You're gonna, by doing this, you're going to raise... Money for his mom. Money for his mom. And his wife. And uh, <laughs> this is huge. This is huge. Patrice O'Neill benefit next Tuesday at the New York City Center. You're a hilarious man. More important, you're a very good man. Bill Burr, thank you very much. He was really starting to hit a stride, too. He was getting mm. great. I mean, he's always been one of my favorite comedians, like always in like the top three since I first saw him. Wow. But in the last few years, he just started to get great. Like, he figured every comedian hits some point where they figure out their thing. Mm -hmm. Like, they do the Hellraiser box, they click it right, <laughs> and it starts yeah. fucking everybody, starts coming out of the doors, <laughs> and hitting everybody, and he just did hit that, I mean, just that last special was incredible, he was just starting Amazing. to figure out yeah. how to make his thing really work. Yeah, but, and, uh, and off stage, to be able to do that on stage is fantastic, but then off stage, just to hang out and bullshit about stuff and make it genuinely funny, any fucking subject that would come up in here, when he was sitting here... He half had, hour. He yeah, had something. He had on at it. least yeah. a half had hour on no, it. He, I was telling, I was trying to explain him to my kids because I, I want them to Good understand luck. what this stuff <laughs> yeah. means. Besides <laughs> that, he was big black guy and he said crazy <laughs> shit. Um, I had to like, I'm explaining him. I had to say that he was black at some point. Like it didn't matter, <laughs> but at some point I had to say he was a huge black guy. <laughs> Like it, I didn't. It didn't actually wasn't material to anything I had to say about it. <laughs> right, him. but you do. You feel compelled yeah, to, him to describe yeah. him like that. Yeah. And also the life lesson that you got to fucking take care of yourself. But uh, yes, true. You know, yeah, which is yeah. it makes me angry at him. But uh, it's just that's the you know biggest substance abuse problem amongst black people is cherry coke. But still the biggest killer. <laughs> But I told them, I thought of a bit that they, he did here that I was able to explain to them. And for a six and a nine year old to grasp it was kind of weird, but they got it because of his wording, which was um, about Plaxico or whatever the guy's name was who shot yeah. himself. Yeah. Plaxico, Plaxico Burris. Burris. Yeah, yeah, the thing that he said about how his, you know, he was rich now living in a mansion and he had a choice in life. He could live, hang out with rich white guys and play golf or hang out with black guys that he grew up with, but if he, who are fun. But in order to do that, he had to carry a gun because those guys are fucking stupid. And they all carry weapons. So it was like live amongst your own, but he's not stupid. He's rich now. So he had to carry a weapon in order to hang out with his own people. That's such an acute observation. That's where he would find these like cracks in the the little things. Oh yeah, my no God. one else was thinking. And my about. kids were howling. They they got yeah. why that was funny. Wow. That's there was nice. there would be shit that like I pondered for years and when the subject came up i felt all good about being able to discuss it and talk about it and then i was saying before in one sentence he'd wrap it up yeah. and and be like how did i never see that and he'd close the book on it yeah yeah done he'd say, here's that's it that's... here's what it is yeah that, and that's it. And that's where everyone now has to refer to Patrice versus the people. <laughs> right, yeah. Yes, he said president. Versus he said president. Yeah. Well, Patrice versus that. the people for racial harmony. <laughs> exactly. No, and he, I mean, I remember he, like the, the famous thing of him going on whatever it was on Fox News. Yeah, we, we just played, played that. Yeah. He Holy got, shit. there's this a woman who actually dresses up to go and protest a rape joke, and he makes her laugh at a rape joke. She laughed at it. She, she absolutely he made, did. That's the power of what he did. Yeah, and yeah. He couldn't, she even, she couldn't deny it. This woman whose whole, I, whole life is, I'm going to go act outraged. Right. Yeah. And she had to go, shit, shit that, that's, that's funny. funny. <laughs> that's funny. Fuck, that's funny. funny. Yeah. I wonder what she's doing now. That uh, couldn't have been good when she went back to the office. Change your path. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's doing really no, like to he made comedy he, all right. He jokes. was he was a guy who forced people. <laughs> he, he also didn't take any easy roads himself. Like everybody does some bullshit version of themselves. Everybody right. does. I do. I have like a bunch of jokes that I know are just there because I ah, old fat, old, you know, right. overweight, <laughs> middle aged. It's dad. Like, I got a bunch of those that I'm kind of, ugh. Ace in the hole. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But he, forced, he has... He, I was going to say, he forced you to be honest, man. Yeah, and he he didn't do that himself. Like, he was such an atypical... The first thing he ever did that, made, that I saw that made me go, this guy is special, was mm -hmm. uh, his bit about how he loves the Beatles. Yeah. And the, the pressure as a black guy <laughs> to have certain trappings. And he says, I love the Beatles, but I can't. And he do it, you know, this visual of him riding around in a Cadillac. <laughs> we all live in a yellow submarine. Look in the hood. What's up, G? <laughs> yellow submarine. <laughs> yellow submarine. But uh, that's not your typical. Uh, no. 
big black guy bit. No, no, we 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 got into so many great uh, racial uh, conversations on this show. Oh yeah, and uh, you know he 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 just slammed me. And mm -hmm. uh, but the great thing was, the second the show ended, you know, we'd be walking down the the sidewalk, going to the parking garage, and he's just you know. Hey, how, how's how's your pool? <laughs> what's, that like? what's that like? Your pool and shit. That, that cool? No, my favorite like, part of being so on this show. Cool. <laughs> I loved being on when he was on because he'd get like we could we would lock horns and stuff and get like I I told him once I wasn't attracted sexually to black women <laughs> yeah. and he tested me for like two hours saying saying that that meant I'm gay. He's like, it means I'm gay. <laughs> and he said. So he would go like, and he it was he started doing this bit where he'd be like, "Please bring up like," and it was like he, a lawyer asking for. He was like, uh, uh, "Please bring up fatbooty.com. dot com." Like, <laughs> yeah, all these yeah, yeah. Sites go to the websites. He's like, you know, "Really, nothing? There's nothing uh, that you can, yeah. you know, what bring up? Yeah, you know, <laughs> look at that. Uh, that's Ryan. juicy. P pissing on black tits. <laughs> <dot> net. <laughs> and he'd, think, he'd come up and he'd go, "This? You don't like this? <laughs> References, man. But we would go okay. at it here, yeah. and then yeah, we'd walk. I, the best part though was walking ho down to the subway with him, and then we'd stand on like Sixth Avenue and and Seventh or uh, Fifty Seventh, and just stand there for uh, like four hours yeah, and yeah. just talk. Oh, yeah. fuck yeah. And he'd say openly s sexual things to every woman that walked <laughs> by, and they would all smile. <laughs> you look yeah. delicious. Yeah, he's just like, look at you with those pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look what kind of panties you got on. Pink, oh, bye, fuck. good morning. He would hold yeah, corn never... on a street corner. Yeah, when, we would do the, when we would do the walkover at the old station, right? and we'd be walking to XM, uh, and Patrice would just stop and talk to any girl yeah. mm -hmm. that was walking, and they would... To engage him. Yes. They would talk to no, him. Like and it's there. like, why aren't they running? <laughs> he, they he would running disarm you because he was funny and silly and he wasn't threatening. And they right. would just like, look silly. at him. But you would the, think he would be threatening. Right, you. right. I mean, just his physical presence right. would mm -hmm. be threatening. And the ability. Uh, maybe to, uh, that's what it was. It was the relief. It's like, oh, yes, no, here's, right. here's this huge <laughs> yeah. black guy. He's, not he's got kind of a sweet me. voice. The, like, oh, I want to hug yeah. him now. We were at the comic strip one time and there was a girl he liked at a Christmas party. And he's like trying to play hard to get. He's like, I'm not going to talk to her and he didn't talk to her and she didn't come over and I said you fucking idiot you think that she, you're being like hard to get she's happy you're not talking to her she doesn't like you <laughs> he really thought that she was being intrigued by his evasiveness he's, yeah. he's just happy that this fucking fat creep was leaving her alone the, the ability to uh, diffuse his his physical presence with mm. something so fast like that quickly when he started Little talking to you words. is amazing yeah. Like, because you, you would just look and go, ah, big black man, <laughs> yeah. must be afraid, must yeah. cross street. No, uh, he but was it, an empathetic person, too. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what made him a great comic, is he, that he saw, you know, he, he had insight because he was yeah. empathetic. <laughs> But he was yep. a guy who would like talk to him for five minutes, he'd start asking you about your life. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah, What's yeah. Going on Every single time. That. There's a one clip that really, for me, defines Patrice. It's so when you guys got in trouble for that. Oh. You know that the, of course you remember the, the crazy yeah. guy who said all the shit about Condoleezza Rice. Yeah, yeah homeless, homeless Charlie. Homeless Charlie, who we yeah. fucking loved. Patrice got on that Fox show with that really humorless lady. <laughs> yeah, from now. And just annihilated her, made her look ridiculous, made the whole thing look preposterous, and defined it in the best way that I heard anybody define all this PC bullshit about going after comedians and radio DJs for trying to be funny. You know, and that that it was that it all comes from the same place. That funny all comes from the same place. It was brilliant. And the way he said it, the way he put it, was brilliant. The way he handled that dumb cunt was brilliant. <laughs> the, the whole thing was brilliant. He, it was just. It was just perfect. It was perfect, Patrice. He killed her with intelligence. Besides, yeah. besides the comedy, that's what was so brilliant about it. When she called him a fool, he won. Yeah, you know, he yeah. goes, "Oh, name calling." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, "Oh, I'm offended." I'm offended. Yeah. It was just so. It was so perfect. You know, yeah. He he killed her with intelligence and charm, and just by being a comic and saying, I "I'm here speaking for funny," you know, and and then <laughs> when she was for like. Funny. She tried to like go over his act and paraphrase his act, and he's like, "No, no, no, that's not what I said." And then he goes and does the whole angry pi pirate thing. <laughs> oh yeah. shit, that you know, was hilarious! Like, oh, I said, "You ejaculate her eye, and then you kick her in the shin." And, <laughs> no. she, and she walks around like an angry pirate. Ah! And then people were laughing on the crew, and he's like, "How are you laughing?" Right. Yeah. <laughs> this woman's outraged. Yeah. 
Oh god damn, that was fucking but that's, funny. That's a great way—a great way to deal with somebody. Like that's how you deal with a dummy like that from now. Yeah, is you don't you don't uh, cower to them or bow to them. You just if you're belligerent about it, they really have no recourse. And that's what he did, and he destroyed her. Yeah, it was it was it was vintage Patrice. And that guy liked him. That John Gibbs really liked Patrice. He would have him. I think Fox got mad at that, mm -hmm. but John Gibbs really loved Patrice. Well, John Gibbs had to do an apology for Patrice's performance. Yeah. <laughs> Did he really? Oh, yeah. yeah, he didn't want to. You could just tell, you know, he was in a, a bad spot. And then, unfortunately, you know, Patrice is sticking up for us and, and comedians in general, and like you said, Joe Funny, and it turned out that Fox never used him again. But that was Patrice. He didn't give a fuck. He didn't care. He yeah, didn't care. what he did was better than Fox using him a hundred times. Right. Him towing their company line. Right. It was the, the, one of my favorite parts is when, uh, the, when it was, Patrice, was, Patrice was like, I speak for funny. He goes, you speak for people that stand in front of that thing and go, oh, today, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> he likes to find that guy's life. Yeah. <laughs> life is 40 hours a week he gets in front of a fucking camera and does that. And Patrice just made him look preposterous. Right. Was, you know. Oh, man. He spoke yeah. for funny. He fucking said it, and that was true. He spoke for funny. She had no idea what she was in for when she, because she oh. probably, like, Man, and I was yeah. saying earlier in the show, the worst thing you could do with Patrice is not realize what a bright guy he was, because he was really a brilliant guy. And and she didn't understand that he was a smarter person than she was, and he was going to run circles around her mentally. Like, yeah, he's a big, loud guy, but he was going to outthink her, and uh, he really made an absolute asshole out of her, which was yeah, fantastic. Her whole premise was that she was speaking for America, you know, and we are tired. He's like, who, who? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> name names. <laughs> name one are name. You speaking for America? Are right. you speaking for America? Right. And he could. I'm speaking for me. He dismissed her, and if anybody knows the face, the, the Patrice scrunch, the <laughs> yes. face, the dismissive yeah. face scrunch. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, you never want it to be on the receiving end of the dismissive face scrunch. <laughs> uh, my own father had a massive stroke when I was very young, and for those of you out there that don't know what strokes do to people, if there is a blessing to take from this unjust parting, it's that a stroke never gives you back the person it takes from you. It's the worst case of like making a copy of a copy. And um, you know, Patrice being who he was and being so large in life and being being such a proud individual to, to, to you know to get taken down this way, it just it it really I, I, I'm <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Remember one day we were talking about. Uh Alfred Hitchcock, and uh, he started, uh, I was talking, to, I, I think I said, like, I thought Alfred Hitchcock was a genius, and Patrice was going, Alfred Hitchcock stinks, <laughs> master of suspense, fuck Alfred Hitchcock, <laughs> the birds, <laughs> psycho, strange, and I'm, I was freaking out and screaming at him. What are you fucking crazy? Alfred Hitchcock, he's the greatest director that ever. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Freaking out. He's, fuck Alfred Hitchcock. Shut the fuck up. My guy gives a fucks about Alfred Hitchcock, right? And then we went to break, and we were in the bathroom peeing, and he's just laughing. And I go, what? What? And he goes, you're too fucking easy, Joe. You really think I think Alfred Hitchcock stinks? He's a fucking genius, you moron. <laughs> God damn, you're too easy to piss off. And that was Patrice, man. It was like he just made it fucking fun. And somewhere in that opinion that was insane to me, halfway through the argument, I really started to be like, wait a minute, does Alfred Hitchcock stink? Am, am I wrong? Is, is, the, is the Academy wrong? <laughs> hey, I wanted to share a story of uh, my experience with uh, Patrice, nothing profound or anything. After the, uh, I saw you guys there at the animation festival with ONA. Yeah. And afterwards, we saw uh, Patrice outside. He was great. He was so personable. And, uh, you know, we asked to take a picture with him. So me and my, me and my girl, we got on each side of him to take a picture and snapped a few shots and we walk away and she turns to me and just quickly says, hey, he, uh, he unhooked my bra. <laughs> and me, that's something that just always stuck out as Patrice. You know, it's just, he was, he was never off. You know, even out in the street, he was just funny as hell and he's just going to really be missed. <laughs> and he would pull out money because people would stand up and go, I, I didn't pay 20 bucks to be offended or whatever. So then Patrice would, you know, grab $20 and go, well, here's your $20 back. Now get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
He's done that. <laughs> he did that more than <laughs> once. For your shitty drinks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he went up. Uh, he went up at a, a CB's comedy club. I remember when he was getting ready for uh, Elephant in the Room, and you know he was doing something a little bit different. Where he was going to stand up, and he wasn't sitting down, and he was trying to go through a material instead of kind of just going off the cuff. And I remember he went up on one night, and there was just like a group of like ten just dippy shithead white girls uh, in the front row. I think he got into two lines, and he was trying to get into some material. And he's like. You know, when you meet a bitch in the store, and I think it was two words in it, he just goes, ah, fuck all you. He just walked off stage. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and he just came up. He was supposed to do about 45 minutes. It was like in the first two minutes. He's like, I hate this crowd. Goodbye. Fuck all you, and he left. Yeah, you know, he classic. Went, he, went, he went upstairs and ordered food. Patrice was the guy that they looked up to because he was definitely the fucking wildest, like, you know, commander of, like, a stage and, yeah. like, Especially with the New York City club scene, which is way better than, you know, like the L.A. club scene in terms of like, you're going to get in somewhere eventually here. You know, it's not like you're going to do a couple of improv classes and meet somebody who does a voiceover thing and rescue a dog and <laughs> just kill some time. You know, hopefully before you're 40 years old, you know, something happens. But here, like these guys looked up to him because he like could dominate these clubs. And then if he didn't like the clubs, he wouldn't go back. You know, it wouldn't yeah. be like this whole thing of like, you know, play ball or whatever. And that's, that's pretty, you know, especially for a guy who is a great comic, you know, you want to see him perform a lot. I don't think Patrice only on his terms. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah you know, he never, I'm sorry gonna, he never lived a false moment. I don't mm -hmm. think. No, he just wasn't willing to. Sometimes he would allow, though, Patrice is the thing, and he, and he was his uncomfortability with people sometimes. He misread situations where he thought that people were being worse than they were. <laughs> and there was times he would go back and realize, like, ah, I, I probably shouldn't have handled that that way. That was self destructive. Like, he was also good at looking back at, with self analysis and going, yeah. Ah, remember, when, that up. remember when Chris Rock gave him that speech? Oh, boy. We had Chris yeah. Rock in. Oh, right. well, I remember because Chris and I, when we were doing this fucking stupid pootie tang, we were auditioning people, and Patrice was, for both of us, one of our favorite guys. Yeah. We loved Patrice, and yeah. we wanted to put him in the movie. And I don't remember which part it was, but there was a big, huge part that was his. Oh, shit. As long as he just walked in and just oh, made a no. basic effort. And Louis, he was <laughs> a good actor, right? He was. He was a really good actor. He could act. He, he could was really, really act. good. And so it was just, let's, you know, and anyway, Chris and I were, we were working on it together at the time and doing a bunch of things at once. And the, that audition that he did with, took place without us there. So we saw a tape and we just see him walk in with this script at his side and his big hand. And he just looks at the camera like, do I, do I have to do this right now? And he kind of picks up the script with this big, all right. <laughs> and just starts wow. reading the lines like, this is shit, I hate this. <laughs> you can see the sweat on his face said, um, like, I just, I had to walk here from whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this. And oh, uh, and we're like, he, we really wanted to give him the part, right. but we couldn't. Wow. But we talked about it. That he was wasting opportunities because of how that's what Chris how said much that talent he had, yeah. and if he could make a few little adjustments to doing exactly what he wants every ten seconds. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, <laughs> he might have been seen by more people. It's hard because we love the guy because he was like that. And when he made it to forty, it was like, all right, you made it to forty this way. Now it's working. It's just yeah, starting yeah. to work. <laughs> I got a question. Did you guys ever see him bummed out? Ever? All the time. Sure. I saw him. Really? I remember, I remember in L.A. He actually taught me. Uh, he, th it's, Patrice was. What do you mean all the time? Well, because we talked all the time. We're always fucking with comics. You know, it's comics like, are always miserable. It's, 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 it's he should have been. He shouldn't. Have, he told me. He said, "Dude, I shouldn't be. I should be more famous than I am. I shouldn't." Be friends with you. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he, like, oh, he's like, I love you, Bobby, but I shouldn't be able to. I shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. I shouldn't be as accessible to you as I am. Like you can just call me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he had such a he had such a like an under like a firm understanding too with the realities of that. Which you know he would always say like, look, man, if you want to walk that righteous road, you got to take the lumps. Like you got to be ready to lose money. And whatever, and he would talk about like if somebody at a club when he was coming up would say, "Patrice, don't do that bit where you say cunt or whatever," and he'd go, "You know, is it a big deal for me not to do the bit? Not really, but it's just a matter of I can't allow you to tell me to not do mm -hmm. it because once I open that door a little bit, then it swings open and yeah, it, and it yeah. never, you know what I mean? It's just the floodgates are open, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of guys aren't familiar with that the way he was. A lot of guys go, "I want to be the fucking rebel." 
But I also want to be loved by everybody. He was yeah, also you know? defensive yeah. sometimes when he did like like he would do that, and because you know everybody wants to to succeed and, and do well, and then when he realized like hey this group actually likes me, then he would just think oh okay like he a lot of times was was more mm. defensive than he needed to be because more people were going to like him and be comfortable with him than he thought. Well, he said right. that one time. He goes, I'd rather make you feel uncomfortable than I feel uncomfortable. You know, then you make me feel uncomfortable. Like, people come into the room, the execs and the big, powerful people, and they'd, you'd feel fucked up. He says, I'd rather just immediately make him feel like a piece of shit than me sitting there feeling like a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Which may, may be wrong, may, may hurt him, may... I don't know, but... It fucking makes sense. I mean, it was hilarious to watch when some important fucking douche would walk in the room. He goes, look at you. <laughs> fucking short. Which, is that a wig? <laughs> you know, it's been over a year. What, what was the date? I don't even know the date. I don't know. But anyway, November. So, yeah, in November, and now we're actually finally getting to celebrate. And that's what it's about. It's about, you know, it's not a negative thing. It's not a sad thing. It's a let's get together and remember Patrice and all the stories in, in a fun way and, and see his mom and, you know, Vaughn and, uh, and all of us be together for Patrice, which, uh, you so, know. Sometimes with a friend, you have to think, like, like all right, what would my friend, how would my friend want me to handle this? Like, or how would my friend want his people treated? You know, his mom or his girlfriend or his wife. Yeah. And that's why you do stuff like this, too. It's also because, you know, you want to, you're honoring your friend by, by treating his family well because you'd want your family treated well. Um, you know, and a lot of guys just didn't want to do that. Or not, I don't think they thought it through so literally. I don't think they thought it through and thought, fuck his family or fuck him. But people are just selfish, and they're worried about their own shit, and they're worried about their own draw, and they're worried about... So fuck them. That's why I, I don't buy anybody's sincerity. You have very few... It sounds silly, but you wind up with very few real close friends. You know, the rest are just cunts. And I mean, I know that, that sounds like a really shitty thing to say, but that is the reality in our business and every business. Um, you know, our job, every job. And it's not just close friends. It was like none of the networks did tributes to him. And, and, and I almost understand why, because they all hated him on a personal level, because he was the guy that would be mean to them when none of us had the balls to be. <laughs> he, you, believe he really me, did. He treated executives of networks the way we wanted to treat them. He treated them like shit. Like, what do you mean? You got any stories? Just uncomfortable. They'd walk <laughs> in, what do you want? You know how loud he was just, he was just awful to them. He didn't make them feel welcome. He wasn't welcoming. He was mean. Um, he was accurate. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was dismissive. Mm. I remember how unpleasant he was when we were doing the Colin Quinn show. Oh, my God. He was just fucking, he was just a twat to everybody. But it was very funny. Right. In hindsight, it was stressful in the time. Right. But I see why executives didn't flock to him. Did you, I mean, have you, have you ever done stuff with him where you're like, ah, I, 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 he made me feel like a spineless pussy sometimes because... I don't want I don't I'm not a fucking controversy fan. I don't like right. I don't like when people don't like me. Right. Um you know, and he didn't give a fuck so much. Sometimes I was like maybe it's too much. Right. And you'd be on a gig with him or on a show and he would be fuck them and you'd have to back him up, but you I don't know I felt like oh shit these people are gonna hate me now he's burning a bridge with me with this club or this venue because yeah. he's such an ass. Partially, but part of me also felt like um Sometimes he was too far in that direction, like where you feel like, oh man, I should be standing tall like he is. But a lot of times that wasn't standing tall. You know, he was like all of us. He was insecure. Yeah. He had his doubts. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. We were talking one time. You know, I guess within a year of when he died, and he was like, man, I just feel, I feel irrelevant. He felt irrelevant, and it was really weird to hear him say that. But he's like, he was pulling himself off the grid because he felt people had too much access to him. But he was feeling like he came on on the air one time, and he was saying that when he was doing his project. And he said he realized how fucked up he had been on so many projects because a couple of people that were doing his thing were a little difficult. And he goes, man, I was an asshole. Like he, would, he had this revelation that he had been so difficult on so many things and he regretted that. Like he wished he hadn't been because once he had his thing, he saw how it was when people were being difficult right. for no reason. Not reasonably difficult, but just reasonlessly right. being an asshole. Yeah. So he was, you know, in a way like, uh, you know, you know, people would hate to hear him and compare, Lennon compare, but at that same age, there's a very good interview with Lennon from Rolling Stone, 
where at the end of his life, he had these really weird revelations about how it wasn't just the world that was fucked up. It was him and he was a part of it and he was growing older and change. And Patrice had that same thing, yeah. that same, you know, fuck you be kind of became like, eh, yeah, I'm a part of the problem too. And yeah, I didn't handle this well. And yeah, I should have done this, but which I loved that he saw that because, you know, it was, it was that to me was, is normal that we, we go through that. I try not to talk. I just can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I what like are you trying just, not to talk? I just try. I'm trying. I, I try to edit myself, but it just, it just, I just can't. <laughs> <Look at me. laughs> I can't stop interrupting. I can't. I just, I step on. I hear it, you got but a, I can't help it. You got a lot on your mind. I just can't help it. And I, if I don't say it, I'll forget it. <laughs> and I just wanted to be out there in cyberspace, some kind of way. It just lives. If, if I speak, I live. You understand? Know Fair enough. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, it's just mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. You're making everyone uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look over there. They're, I don't want to look at them. They're, they're very uncomfortable. They need, they need shiny objects every 15 seconds. Just, <laughs> can I say something serious for like a minute? It's a five and a half hour show. Can I just fucking. Well, I'm going to miss you guys. And we good? Why? Yeah. We're going to see you tomorrow. Yeah. I'm not going to miss you till tomorrow. Oh, yeah, you're lonely. All right, this is a, a little weird. It's going to be Patrice O'Neill, Warren Hayes. Man, yeah. this is all spoken. Man, you know I've been enjoying things that kings and queens will never have. In fact, kings and queens can never get. Mm, and they don't even know about it. In good times, mm, great googly moogly. Go great googly moogly. If I never get well no more I have had my fun If I never get well no more Oh, my health is fading on me spent more money than a millionaire because if i had kept all my money that i already spent i would have been a millionaire a long time ago and women ooh, women great googly moogly please write my mama shape I'm in Please write my mama Tell her the shape I'm in Tell her to pray for me That's all uh, right. Yeah. That's, that's Holland Wolf. You got to listen to Holland Wolf, though, man. That's it's all right, so. You got a voice on I'm going Patrice. down slow. You just said, right tell my mom I love her.